Greetings, everyone. <laughs> and welcome to a terrifying yet life-affirming episode of Monster Party! Monster Party! <laughs> Monster Party! I'm partying! Hey, hey. hey James, have a little more... Yeah, a little, a little more energy? A little, yeah, a little more energy? <laughs> that's better. What? <laughs> this is... God, it's, that's damn great. you. It's, it's the new year. It's the new year. I'm excited. Uh, it's the, it's the future. Yes. <laughs> it's the beginning of a grand new era. And in this era, <laughs> who are you? Who are you, sir? I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. And boy, do we have an episode to start this year and out with. This yeah. is like, I yeah. love, this is so fun, Matt. There's so, <laughs> so many fun. fun things about this episode that I'm going to make a journal <laughs> I'm going to create a journal that I'm going to write in through this episode, keeping some of the highlights, and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to sort of earmark them with little hearts. There's no stars. No, there's no way you can do that. Well, no, watch no, no, me. This is going to go fast. Hey, this is hey, Larry, lightning. What man. if we pretend? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I want to. I want to go. Capable. So, what is? Our amazing fun, and this is a part two, actually. Right? This, this is, is well, revisiting this topic. We are. Yeah. Yes, we had so much fun with it the first time, and then when I found out that we could get this amazing guest, it just all the planets aligned here. What Ooh. is our topic? The topic is who would win? Who would win? Who would win? Volume two. This yes, this is like you know the, the, the two forces against each other. You know, like two things. Two creatures enter a room, one yeah, thing it's, leaves, it's you know? It's the classic schoolyard argument. Argument, yeah. yes. And it can be fantasy, sci-fi, Monsters. comics. Oh, I've got it all. i got it all. Anything. Yeah, I, I, anything that's fantastic. Yeah, it's like it's like Batman, Superman, King Kong versus Godzilla, right, bacon against right. eggs. It's big. Yeah. It's big. <laughs> bacon would fight eggs. And and Matt, we are we are excited because we have someone really special. Yes, we do. Yes, we we do. have now we had Chris Mancini here. Uh huh. A really um, funny guy. Really funny awesome. guy. Mm-hmm. Very good friend of mine from Comedy Film Nerds. Mm-hmm. Now we have the other half of Comedy <laughs> Film Nerds. All right. Graham Elwood. Graham Elwood. Yes. Oh, great friend. <laughs> A wonderful comedian and uh, a film nut like yes, us. Yes, yeah. yes, uh, yeah. I'm Chris and I are. I'm the. We're like a Siamese twin, of a, <laughs> we're like a, a two headed podcasting beast. Yeah, from comedy film nerds. Better that than a four headed. Oh boy, you see what I have to put up. With. <laughs> oh, oh, and, and you're the better half, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Oh my All gosh! Right. Okay, okay. Well, Whoa, I, hell, let's uh, just get to it. Then, I want right? to. I want to get started. Do I want. Yeah, yeah, I, I want right to get. I, I do. I do. And, and it's right. funny. You like what you said, sir, Matt. I <laughs> I have. I've I've had, still doesn't know. I, I, I know. I've had a few, well, you know, it is <laughs> my show. So yeah. <laughs> yes. No, but but it's like. I have stuff from science fiction, fantasy, and horror. I've got oh, all oh. three. Okay. Oh. All right. So picture this. Picture this, Graham. Okay. Who? would win. It's the green slime from 1968 versus the blob, 1958, the Steve McQueen. Okay. No, 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 no. He, now imagine if you will. No, wait, no, hold on. Before we go yep. on, yep. I, I got to make sure, Graham, are you familiar with the green slime? Oh, come on. Yes. I yes, oh, yes. I think I love you. Yes. And of course, you know the blob. Of course I know the yeah. blob. Okay, okay, okay. So imagine if you will, if you remember at the beginning of the green slime, you know, when they land on this planet... It, the, the green slime is like this ooze. It really is just like the blob at first. Well, y- yes, Sean, it is. But see, the difference is it actually manifests itself into like these giant creatures which multiply. Right. Okay. It, right. That slime actually transforms into like little bipedal tentacles, yes. one-eyed monsters. Yes. And which and what's really cool about these things too is it's like let's say you shoot it, you shoot it, and it spews out you know green blood, or it's more like blobulous pus or something. Right. Then that grows into. More a green slime. slime. Yeah. Right. Blobulous pus. Yes. Is a good name for a band. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well. Well. Okay. I saw them before. They're fantastic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they just. They were at Coachella like three years. See ago. them with the original lineup, though. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 That's not. That's not the case. But anyway. No. So Bangor's not in it anymore. <laughs> but anyway, he did solo. So the blob, though the blob, the blob you have, it's this alien creature that gets uh, thrown down to planet Earth in a little meteor that opens up, and it constantly like consumes. Living matter. Right, and it right. grows and it grows and it grows. Now imagine, if you will, these two blobulous pussy creatures were to meet in like a battle, like in a, a battle cage. Who would win? 
I don't know. That's a. Mm. I, you know what? I, this is what I think. Okay, because I have I a theory actually, too. But go I ahead. think it's going to be the blob. <gasps> no, I, I, really? I think it's going to be the blob because the blob just eats anything. Yeah. Well, yeah, it depends on how much up to that point the blob has eaten because it gets bigger the more it eats. Now we're talking about. You know, let's just say a blob of similar size to a one green slime. No, 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 no. Imagine, That's imagine. Just, well, I, I see it as well. See, it doesn't matter, Matt, because one blob versus one green slime. One blob they're both makes they're, you okay, larger. Yes, yes, yeah, okay, because what happens is the green slime will constantly multiply, whereas the blob just kind of grows bigger. And I—that's well, kind it, of its multiplying. Yes, right, yes, right, yes. Right. yes. Now I ha- go ahead. Greg. I was going to say that that's to me. Why I go blob as well. <gasps> you go blob I too? I go blob as well. Well, two reasons. One, Steve goddamn McQueen. So right there. No, no, Steve no. McQueen. <laughs> Dude. But here's why I go blob. What does Steve McQueen have to do with the blob? He's in the movie. He's in, he's the, in the, movie. the movie. Yes, but he's, he's not helping the blob beat the green but slime. Maybe he is. No, no, it was no. A, it was it's a, not, basically a stalemate. Ma- uh, if you're associated with Steve McQueen in any manner, you, you have <laughs> a, right. a power. Yes, but do you yeah, know the cast story. in the green slime? It's yeah, quite a cast. Robert Horton? Come on. <laughs> Richard <right>. Jekyll? <laughs> look, look. Richard no, Jekyll no, no. is Luciana no Paluzzi. Steve McQueen. Look, Luciana Paluzzi. Hey, look, look, if you're going to play this game right, you got to play it right, okay? He you is can't playing just, it right. No, he's not. You can't throw Steve McQueen in it because Steve McQueen is not the blob. He is in the blob, the okay, movie. But, but Chris, well, uh, sorry. Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I know Chris and I look a lot alike. Wow. I'm so sorry. We're just talking about the two headed podcast bees. Look, look, look. Getting, getting back. No, just, like, I, I, no, well, first, Jones I go from the films. For, uh, the reason I say that is because, for, as as a co- member of Comedy Film Nerds, like Steve McQueen is like one of those guys that transcends and everything. Now, I know what you're saying. We're not saying which movie's better. You're saying no. which in a fight, in a theoretical yes. fight, in a theoretical fight, they're both from they're both alien life yes, forms. Yes, yes, right. yes. Here's why you. I go blob. Okay, tell me because it just grows and grows. Now, now the the green slime multiplies. Yes, but to me, what you're happening, what the strength of the blob is, is it's just going to get bigger and bigger and overwhelm. Everything. I understand the, the right. green slime was like a virus, so it can keep multiplying. But then I don't trust that. I, I feel like well, it, like a virus, is, it could well, run its course. Green, it could, but, it could but, lose yes. its power. But, or, it's like with the, 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 but the green slime, it has the tentacles that has, it, remember, electrocutes things, it electrocutes people. And it like, you know, but that doesn't really, affect the blob. Only cold affects the blob. Right, and the blob is just going to get. True. It's going to get so big. There's nothing you can do with it. And it yeah, it'll it just, just like engulf, engulf a planet. The, yeah. Yeah. yeah, engulf a planet. Let's say so. But remember, if you remember slime, no, no, no. Yeah, but they're but, all Matt, over the yes, space Matt, station. If you gave the green slime enough time, the green slime can do the exact same so, thing. So, Larry, are you saying the green slime would win? Yes. Wow. Yes. Ooh. But, but, but what, how, how? I want to exactly? know. I want to know what you think. I'm, how does it defeat? I'm with the blob. Are you guys all with blob? Because I think what you're describing, if anything, is a stalemate. No, no, right? no, it's not a stalemate. No, no. How does Sean, it defeat I want, the blob? I want How does to it defeat no, the blob? I just want to hear what Sheridan I, I says. Do, I do think the blob would win because even, even like the one kind of power that the green slime have is, remember they have electrified tentacles? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but in the blob, they tried to electrocute the blob and even that didn't work. <gasps> so there's no there's no oh. like defense against the blob. Oh. The, 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 the green blob slime would, can't freeze, the, freeze it. The blob would use the green, he would have <laughs> engulf the green slime and make it, uh, I'm I, I'm sorry if I said he. I don't know the gender of the blob. <laughs> My apologies. He doesn't even know your name, so <laughs> I think you you've earned that you've earned that right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I think the blob could theoretically, in my from what I've seen of the blob, it could use the green slob and get, slime and get, <laughs> get, <laughs> become a, a green slob. It's a tongue twister, isn't it? <laughs> no, but then the blob could use the green slime to get bigger. It's just right, another right. entity. Okay. That uh, wait a minute. I got. So, I just thought of something that actually goes in the green slime's favor, though. Okay. Oh. Okay. This might upset things. Oh, a little, bit. A little Maddie flip flop. I don't know. I just thought of this <laughs> because cold affects the blob. Mm. One thing we know about the green slime is that they can survive in the vacuum of space. Yes. They hang yes. out on the outside of the space station. How do they That's get, how do they right. get the blob to come out, though, no, into no. space? Oh, well, well, they, well, he's here's, too here's, smart. No, no, no. Like, oh, here's what happens. No. Here's what happens, Sean, Mr. Smarty Pants. What okay. happens is the blob tries to go out there, and it freezes in space. But, but the Winter slime. Or no, does it wait? 
Why is the blob going out? The, the second that, it, right. The, the second it senses um, cold. Yes. Like in the movie when it tries it to go it, it goes away. So, right. so it goes back no, in. So green slime you're wins. By, yes. So green slime wins by default. No, stalemate. Sta- no, it's no, it's they not, have, no, it's not. No, it's a stalemate. It's not a stalemate. Because no. then they, then if Matt. they come in, then the then yeah. the blob has. If a space station wall is between the the green slime and the blob, and then they're not fighting. The blob's not going to go out into space, and the green slime's not going to come in. It's the definition of a Okay, yeah. look, look. They yeah. have to go into a. They both have to go into a ring, okay? And they both have to have it out. Maybe okay, this ring is in outer space. Into a ring. If they're forced into a, a, a if they can't get to room, the ring, <laughs> you have to be able to get to the ring. If the ring is in outer space, there's no fight. All right. Well, I I just thought this was kind of cool because they were both kind of blobulous puppy creatures. I like creatures. it. Yeah, I think it's a good. And I I was I you know I Sean I forgot about the electricity thing in in the blob and I I I know the movie I love the movie you know the green slime because they electrocute people. I, lo- kill people that I way. love the green slime. So, okay, you guys say blob. I'm going to say green slime just because you guys are assholes. So, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, lashing out pretty early in the wow. episode. That's, well, I thought wow. you guys I thought were it's a new record. Who would win, <laughs> Larry wow. or the rest of Monster Park? <laughs> okay. I'm right. taking my blob and going home. <laughs> all right, all right. So, so why don't you throw us something? Okay, um, yeah, I got one. All right, who would win? Norman Bates <gasps> in, in mother mode yes, yes, uh-huh. yes. against... Mrs. Voorhees. <gasps> oh. Two mothers fighting for their sons. Wow. Fresh my memory on Mrs. Voorhees. She's um, Jason's son. Jason's mother. Jason's mother from, from Friday, Friday the 13th. 13th. Yeah. Now, Sean, that is very That's good. Because yeah. they're kind of, they're both well, manic killers who like, are like uh, yeah. killing with a purpose, but they're both humans. They're both insane. Who would win? They're both wearing dresses. <laughs> go, go ahead, Chris. To me, I, I, go to ahead, me, Chris. I and, I, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, Tom, go we're, ahead. We're, 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 we're going to get your name right eventually. It's fine. So. I, I only know Matt. <laughs> <laughs> As it should be. So, I would say I go Norman Bates, and here's why. Okay. He okay. is a split personality right. who, when he splits into, into mother mode, is capable of killing. Right, and right. I think I think that is far more dangerous. Jason's mother is mean and evil, but she created something evil. Whereas the evil is inside of Norman Bates. He, it's well, not like he was so huh. evil that his his child became evil. Right, he is. He literally takes on the personality he, of his evil mom. He's the evil mom, <clears throat> and he killed his mom. And then took on her personality and murders people and doesn't think he's doing it. That's a kind of crazy that I think wins mm. in a in a fight. Like I, yeah. Jason's mom is just she's just a bad. Well, parent. well, she's killing all the teenagers at the camp because it's out of revenge. Because back in the day, sure. Jason drowned because the camp members weren't paying attention. Mm-hmm. And he drowned, so like she's she's against every. T- Teenager and she's just mad. She's with... just an angry mom. He's, a, he's a, you know, aren't they all? Aren't they all right? Well, no. you know, an angry mom can be pretty darn powerful, my friend. Let right? me tell you. Yeah. Well, have you have you ever one of those? And that was very well reasoned. But here's here's my rebuttal because I think the difference between the two is that one is someone who thinks he's a mom. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's strength in that kind of psychosis. But I would say with Mrs. Voorhees, she is an actual mom who is seeking revenge over the murder of her son. Now, that's pretty powerful. And the mom that, will do anything that mom to instinct Yeah, yeah, the mother instinct. It's pretty savage. And I think that's there's almost a level of emotion that goes deeper than the person that's... Because like, I still feel with Norman, there's a moments where you could almost throw him off his, his mom track. Like, you're going, hey, Norman! And he, he might come out of it. You, you know, Matt, Matt, I just yeah. thought of something else, too. I just thought of something else along those lines. Norman is so into his mother. His mother is old. His mother, although she may have the power to take the knife, she is old and kind of decrepit, <laughs> oh, that's you know? Funny. No, 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 so no. He no, I like that. When, I he, like that. when yeah. he takes on his mother, he even he has the line at the end of the movie, I'll just sit here and, and I won't even touch that fly. Right. And, and so my point is, when he is mother... Who were you doing just then? Uh, I was no, doing the Norman ahead. Bates mother. Uh, I thought that was uh, a mother. Tim Conway character. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Wiggins? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's what I was doing. No, 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 no. But when he... Well, I when see what you mean. Yeah, he, yeah, he, 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 he takes so on like an older her. woman persona. That's a good, so I, that's even a good though, point. Matt, even He's though, pretending yes. to be an old woman. Yes. So just yes. the... Whereas, would he also take on the physical strength of yep. an old woman? Right. No, no. 
Well, but, and, but the reality is, I see what you're saying. Personality wise, body language, how he moves, he's taking on the 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 the, right. the, the body language of an old woman. But the reality is, he has the strength of a guy. Well, in his but, so he couldn't control it. Wait a minute. Once, he, once he got into yeah, murder right, mode. Right. Wait a minute. Wait, yeah. What do you think he is? He's like Lou Ferrigno? No, he's he's a no. tall, skinny guy. No, but you know, you know what he does have? <laughs> he's still stronger than a 90 year old woman. He has. No, no, what, <laughs> he has well, the it is Tony Perkins. It, he <laughs> has the advantage of surprise. Because Jason's mother isn't going to see him coming as Mrs. Bates. No, 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 no. They both have to enter a ring. Uh, they have to enter well, him. in that case. Well, he's yeah. Got- yeah, as soon as Mrs. Voorhees sees like, this guy in drag, she's like, I'm, right. I'm gone. No, 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 no. no but, I, yeah. but also, listen. To- Wins by default. He's going to be physically bigger than Mrs. Voorhees. But she's got they're an about axe. About the same, they're about the same she's physical, got a physique, I think. And yeah. she is, she's, she's a little beefy, she's a, she's buddy. She's a little beefy. Yeah. She's a little but, but beefy. Also, the, you know, she's got that sweater on. He's got the knife. You have to think of She's got that sweater, Graham. But you have to think of the reason why Norman, as his mom, was killed. Killing. He was killing promiscuous women who he w- she was she was afraid would take Norman away from her. Whereas, as Matt pointed out, Mrs. Voorhees is doing it to protection of her son. It's that that mother instinct. I think I go with Matt. I think Mrs. Voorhees is a more savage, more yeah. focused killer. Yeah. Per- of, and of, of, animal protecting the its reasons. cub. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. and and I mean, I also think That's you know, a Graham. Good point. No, no, he's got a great point, Graham. And all and also the other thing is, is like, it's like Norman Bates. If he's got that little wig on, you know, and if that wig, if they're battling and the wig comes off, he's gonna flip out. He's gonna flip out because <laughs> well, that's, he loses the yeah, the, he lo- the illusion. Yeah, and, and, and he kinda, he, immediately yeah, he's yeah, taking knocked the wig out. off. He's that's true. No, that's that's true. That's Sean. That's Sean. That's Sean. That's 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 Sean. He's totally taken out of his element. Well, yeah, in the movie, and, at the end, when it happens, yeah. Like and the funny thing out, is, yeah. James brought up a really great point too. It's about how how James? yeah, James <laughs> about <laughs> about the surprise factor. Well, yeah, Every right, time yeah. he, it's like getting people at like a really vulnerable moment. Here, it's like okay, mm-hmm. little Miss, you know. Muffet? Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, you're in your corner. Voorhees is she is. I think she's animalistic, and it's like protection. But whereas, well, whereas Mrs. Bates is not necessarily protection, exactly. right? But she can also she also has an element of surprise too because she comes comes going. Oh, I'm Mrs. Voorhees. I, yeah. I run the place here. You know, yeah. you, she, you don't know she's gonna freaking. Well, I want to bring up throat. something you just you just mentioned. You just, you talked about animal instinct. So in the Hitchcock movie, it's all bird imagery. The whole movie mm. is about birds. Because they're stuffed. Because the, like, well, like the mom. It takes place, the opening scene takes place in Phoenix, which is a rising bird. Ooh, yeah. um, there's Ooh. all these scenes where Norman Bates has got these birds of prey over him. Mm-hmm. Marion Crane. Yeah, exactly. She's got smaller birds over him. So I think what you're saying about how Voorhees is, is protecting the cub and she's coming from animal instincts, I think you can't overlook the amount of a predatory animal instinct that is coming from Norman Bates. Hmm. He is coming from a place when he's in mom mode, he is also protecting his his son. Yeah. So, right. You know what well, I'm I saying? See, I so see, yeah. so I think I wouldn't let that fool you that oh he just attacks fool. women in in the in the shower, he's weaker than Mrs. Voorhees. Right, right. I think he would come so from you, a place so you're of, going with Bates. I'm still gotta go Bates. You yeah. guys make compelling I don't think, no, you Grant, guys make compelling Graham, arguments. I don't think this is a I don't think there's a clear winner on no, this. No, one. no, no. I really I, I really don't. Max I, versus I, I Yeah. Na- na- Max versus I boy, you guys are really <laughs> And you're not drinking at all. Shut up. You don't know me. I think it is a little more clear. I think, Graham, it sounds like you're like going towards strength because Norman is a man, you know, although tall and lanky or whatever, you know, that he would overpower Voorhees. But I just think that the mental state of Voorhees and also she is not as meek as you might think. I do think that she's stocky. I do think that she could really give Norman <laughs> Betsy a... Betsy Palmer. A, yeah, no, no, I really think that she could give a, 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 him a good run for his money. So I, I'm i actually with you, Sean. I'd like to I see go, that. I go, I go with Voorhees. Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. James, what do you think? Good one. No, no, no. Uh, what, do you, uh, what do you think? I would go with Mrs. Voorhees. You know, oh, the, the, oh, the, ver- oh. the ver- <laughs> variety of weaponry puts it over the top. That's true really. too. You know, you've she got does use different- so. Yeah. So we've got here yeah. four. She's creative. So we yeah. got the four- arrow through the bed. Yeah, so four yeah. here for Voorhees and one for Miss Bates. So you lose that one. Okay. <laughs> no, I, no, it's a contest. Sorry, I, sorry I, I Frank. Don't, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think I'm the I'm the uh, the judge here, really. And, no, uh, no. Well, what makes you the judge? <laughs> well, it's your show, so I get to be the judge. There's there's five of us here. We can we even out. You know, I, I thought there were great arguments on both sides. I mm-hmm. would agree with that's that. That's fair. Okay, that's all. All right, all right. Who's next, Matt? 
So here's what I'm going to go into the superhero world. <gasps> yeah. Oh, this is interesting. And this is Ooh. one that I have, I gave it a lot of thought as I was doing this matchup. And I think it's a good one. And this would be All right. Ant-Man. <gasps> Ant-Man. Ooh. Paul Rudd, Ant-Man. Okay. Against the Incredible Hulk. Oh, Ooh, wow. Now here's my, huh, here's my thing. Now Ant-Man you would think, okay, there's this little tiny guy and there's this giant strong monster. Right. But in my opinion, and I have to go right to who I think would win. Okay. I think it would be Ant-Man. Why? Because, how, how so? Because the Hulk is this strong monster, but if, if you can become very small, yeah. you could get into the Hulk's body. Even if his organs were super strong, like right. his skin, yeah. and you couldn't really pierce him or do anything, yeah. you could at least get into his bloodstream and stop it and cause you know, an artery to burst or something. Yeah. I think that you could, if you were small enough, you could get into his brain and give him an aneurysm. Right. Oh. I think, I think you're, that's brilliant. I think the Ant-Man is like the one that could defeat the Hulk. Yeah, and a lot of yeah. other superheroes, too, because of that well, power. you know, yeah. you bring up a really interesting thing, also because maybe the Hulk is more, he's more like, um, I don't necessarily want to say animal, but more like this raw emotion. He's yes, not. Right. He's not really able to, like, constructively think and analyze, okay, I see Ant-Man entering my ear, I better stop him, or... Right, I, you know, I'm going to yeah. wear ear muffs yeah, 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 plug yeah, my yeah, nose. I, because I just think he reacts <laughs> to, plug. There, there's little Ant-Man I must crush, and, you know... And, and although, so, although, for that reason, Hulk might have more of an edge, because his brain is not like other brains, so Ant-Man might yeah. actually not be able to manipulate his brain that easily. So are you saying that you don't think that Ant-Man could cause an aneurysm inside Hulk? Well, manipulate his brain. I mean, if you're talking about doing anything to make him different mentally, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But to actually mess with, like, the only thing I've been sort of arguing with in my own mind is how fortified are his internal organs. Right. All right. So could Ant-Man conceivably get inside the Hulk and cause a stroke? And do anything. But does does Ant-Man even have to kill the Hulk? Because I I think he could just simply... Totally incapacitated and exhaust, exhaust him and by being like a little bee flying around right. him, and it's Hulk's and Hulk trying to get him. Yeah. Also, also yeah. another thing that they didn't even think of is there are many other places where Ant Man could enter, not just ear, not just mouth, <laughs> but there are other places which could cause very uncomfortable. That's true. Well, I did, yeah, I did say butt plug, but uh, that well, would, yeah, oh, oh, I mean, but yeah, I mean yeah. that would be that would actually can you I mean, imagine, if you were willing to take on the job. <laughs> that would drive well, him crazy. Well, right? Ant Man, he's up that big, big great yeah. crank. Well, th- think yeah. of, well, just get get in there with like a grappling hook and just go to town. <laughs> and next thing town. you know, he is, he's, well, you know, you know, think about his feet it. up. Yeah, I mean, we've all been there. You know, we, <laughs> you know, we've <laughs> all been there. Okay, Graham. I need to stop no, for a no, second. Come on, come on, come on, come on Matt, Matt. When anyone says we've all been there, <laughs> involving the ass, I want to know more. Larry, no, no, no. You, you know when we've had grappling like, cramp, hook, or no, no, no. You, you've had cramps or something, and you've had you know some pain or like some bad. Oh, I see you what know, you're saying. You know, okay, so any kind of ass, yeah, problem. Yeah, or yeah. Stomach. I mean, it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> kind of ass and, problem. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Well, that'd be another thing too. As Ant Man, you go in there and you just. Bring something that you then put in his stomach. No, you can't do that. Get inside a human being and then just go giant. No, but see, that's the problem with that. Maybe is what if what if his skin because he's so impervious to things. Right. Would you end up crushing yourself because you might uh, kill him, but you might end up killing yourself as well. Like, see, you can't. You no, no, Matt. You can't say if you're. I'm going to bring something with. Uh, I'm going to bring along like a giant pill or something to to put in Hulk. I mean, then what does Hulk have? Hulk has to bring something. Well, to go Hulk, Hulk, uses, weapons, Hulk will then. throw a tank at someone or a yeah, tree yeah. or you know. But like, but like Graham said, he can just. Well, but if, oh, Ant-Man, oh. if Ant-Man just becomes giant man and just kicks the, kicks the ass out of the but Hulk. But if his skin is impervious, what if it, you can't get through it and it ends up just crushing you? <gasps> okay, okay, okay. Here's a question for you. That could happen. No, it's no, like tr- I, mean, I mean not being inside him. It's like just growing be, just, in a trunk. I don't, I don't mean starting inside him. I mean just, just grow. You're, they're staying facing each other. Uh, okay, he he's giant man. Hulk, then I would say Hulk wins. Yeah, because, why, why? because giant man is just giant. He doesn't have. He's not necessarily. Okay. He doesn't necessarily okay. have the powers of the Hulk. The Hulk is right, like right, okay, right. impervious to almost everything, right. and he, he still gets has the, brute the more angry he gets, the stronger he gets, which is not Giant Man. Okay, I got right. you. And, and, and the other thing too, I mean, let's just say for the sake of argument that let's say Ant Man just went up the behind. Okay, let's just say he did that, All and right. and as he's crawling up there, what for the if, sake of fan fiction? Let's just say that that the Hulk <laughs> felt an itch and grabbed a tree or something and just. Rammed it up there. Wouldn't he not hurt 
Ant Man and bring. I don't Sto- think the Hulk is that thick headed that he's going to just jam a tree up his can. You know what I'm I think saying? He'd start with some a leaf or something. Yeah, just, no, 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 I didn't no, no, get no. enough the last time I wiped a, and yeah, scratch. No, it. see, see, you're making it sound like he's so gentle, and no, he's like raw emotion. He would just react. He would just go. But that's, ah, but that's why I say, why deal with all this? Because we're talking. That seems to be like a certain size. Uh-huh. Whereas yeah, yeah. I say, go super tiny. Yeah. Oh, in you're the like, bloodstream. You're like microscopic. Yeah, yeah. like micro, like oh. get into the bloodstream. That's if, if, if Ant Man can do pile up a bunch of blood platelets you know but, it, and, but it's and, also it's very dangerous for ant-man to go that small remember it, it's well, but that's it's, not subatomic that's just small well, yeah but well also, couldn't he just go into how his, small but couldn't he the just size of an ant? Not subatomic okay, okay. so okay. the size of an ant so what half the size of an ant the size yeah. of you, a blood platelet or what if he just that's went, really small matt he just, that's he just small. go down but the it Hulk's would work throat if he goes down the hulk's throat and then enlarges a little bit he suffocates him. <gasps> you yeah, might. I, well, I just don't see how the Hulk can defend against any of these things. No, I don't yeah. see. Yes. See, see. The, no. the thing is, I, I do think yeah. that his his physique though would would cough the Ant Man up. Yeah, I, mean, I do. Like, I like if the Hulk gets one like, lucky blow and like before Ant Man can move, he smashes him with his fist and he's done. Yeah. See, Sean, it's not yeah. it's not like his outside body is like armor and his inside is like it's like a soft squishy melon. Right. Right. It's no, like he's his all, whole right, his yes whole his body whole body Hulk, everything. Right. So I do. Th- my first thought was, oh, you're right. If Ant Man gets it get lodged in there but i do think that the strength of the hulk <clears throat> could right, could right. possibly crush him even if he got stuck in his throat there could be a thing you got him to a place where he passes out right, then he right. becomes bruce banner again and then you're fine which could that's happen true. That's that, true. which yeah. could happen we have seen hulk be overpowered by some stuff right right, right. Uh, whether it's necessary exhaustion what he or could like just a- do is just get into his ear and go Hulk, you're a fine. You're okay. Like calm him down, <laughs> right? Go. Right, right. And just do it that yeah. simple. God, you bring up some really good. Well, okay. So you know, what? That, are we, that would be the contest. He would try everything else, and that would be the and last. And that would be the thing that, that would work. work. Yes. Yeah. 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 So totally. are we all in agreement that Atman would win I this contest? So. Yeah. Atman so. two has now been written. <laughs> Matt, uh, we can move on. Matt, that was an interesting, interesting uh, selection because my first gut reaction was that that's stupid, you know. Good but, show. but actually, yes, I, Thank I, you. I, I think we're all doing an amazing job. Oh. Okay, <laughs> all right, James. James, no, lay it on. Okay. Please take a turn. Oh boy, um, here we go. I'm ready. Who would win, Robert Bo- Altman? <laughs> no, come on, come on, Woody let's, Allen. Let's not bring that up again. Come on, here we go. Boris Karloff as the Frankenstein monster. Okay, okay. got okay. it. I've yep. heard of him. Got Versus. It. Glenn Strange is the Frankenstein monster. Oh. Wait. And, and. Wait, and. What? No, and. No. And don't jump to conclusions because it's a little more, there's a little more to it than you might at first think. No. So, no. no. Glenn no. Strange, of course, the Frankenstein monster in the latter. The latter, yes. Right, uh, Frankenstein right. films, House of Frankenstein. House of Frankenstein. Dracula, House of Dracula. Uh, and then Boris Abra Karloff Castello. from the, the classic 1931. Right. right. Yeah. Graham, I'm going to give this to you. What do you think? I got to go Karloff. I think mm. I just I just yep. have to go because it's it's uh, it's like you know Dick York Dick Sergeant from uh, <laughs> Bewitched you know I, I just think I think Karloff <laughs> <laughs> who would win in those two? That's a good one, actually, well we'll we'll get to that next, but let's do this Karloff one. Come on, I, I think Karloff that was well again I'll come in from the film side real quick. It was his character. He created him. He knows who he is. So the way he portrayed him. The Karloff one just seemed, while he had the sensitivity, which is part of that, like, oh, he is part kind of human, Mm -hmm. I think his anger and his strength would win in the fight. Because you also have to put it into context, when that movie came out, no one had seen anything that crazy and that terrifying. So if you're going to put it in that context, then he was the scariest, creepiest freak that we'd ever seen. So I think he wins. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, also James, come on. I mean, when you see, no, 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 no. When you see Karloff as the Frankenstein monster for the first time, when he awakens, when he is awake and he gets angry and is tortured and and he's and like in Bride of Frankenstein, there's a scene at in Frankenstein in the 1931 where when he's in the windmill and Colin Clive, Doctor Frankenstein, is trying to hide with the the mill going around and the Frankenstein monster Karloff is looking at him like 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 this animal and he and he can move and he's strong and he can. He's agile, whereas 
Glenn Strange, with all due respect to Glenn Strange, <laughs> who has the classic look, is more like this lumbering kind yes, of uh, kind yeah, of sleepy. Yeah. Yes, yes, there's strength there, James, but he doesn't have the agility and also I, I he doesn't have the brains. I, I, I by the way, and the brains. Yes, and the brains. Strange is just sort of like a bouncer. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean where where well, Karloff is like a really savvy fighter. Yes, yes, yes. And, yes. and I, I hope we're going to throw this in here, and we I think we have to. He's not blind. <gasps> there's that. Oh. There is that because the Frankenstein monster, really by those films, Te- is actually technically blind. Matt, Whoa. You, yes, I, Matt, yeah. you are, ah, ooh, eat mm. that. Okay, there. Okay, Gonus. Here, here's my reply to this. Okay, I go with Glenn Strange, and here's why. <sighs> yes, Karloff's monster is is a lot more brute force, a lot more um, brutal, and just ferocious. And Glenn Strange is lumbering and slow. But what Glenn Strange didn't have that Carlos Monster did is humanity. If all that Glenn Strange's monster has to do is offer Karloff a flower or play him some violin, and Karloff's monster is going to start to tear up, and he's going to soften. Oh, okay, okay. You're doing like young yeah, 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 Frankenstein. Yeah, 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 no, 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 James. No, no, no. I, I'm no, doing Bride of Frankenstein, my James, friend. James, I, I tried oh, to let yeah, you go you're, without you're, jumping in there, but it's like, right. what you're saying, ah. you're saying Glenn, Str- you're Glenn Strange Frankenstein would either have the will or the, the, the mentality to go, Here's flower or no. start playing a violin. No. That's insane. No, this is not, and then that, you're saying so. Then Karloff would fall for it and lose the fight. I That's think Karloff saying. would kick it's like, his it's, ass. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, Boris Karloff Frankenstein versus the Blind Hermit. Mm-hmm. It's. Frankenstein versus Frankenstein. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. So that Frankenstein, there will be, there's going to be no flowers. There's going to yeah. be no violin. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's going to be a blind man trying to headbutt you. But like James <laughs> said, to, to me, the Glenn Strange Frankenstein is lumbering brute force. Mm-hmm. And he is of much stockier and taller stature, mm-hmm. and to me, stronger than Karloff's. Karloff's Frankenstein, to me, I always thought was more corpse-like. Mm-hmm. And it was, yes, he can be very brutal, and he can be very savage, but... Agile. Him, him against Glenn, St- Glenn Strange is like an unstoppable force of nature, for better or for worse. By the time we got to those Frankenstein films, he became just a one-dimensional brute force thing. And that's why, in a, in a theoretical fight, I think Strange would win. <gasps> Thank you, Sean. Oh, no. Thank you very much. Wow. Sean. I appreciate oh, that. No. Now, look, look, Wait, look. He's not touchy, he's not touchy-feely the, the like Carl, Frankenstein. No, no, no. no, 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 no. The Carlos Carlos Frankenstein. monster yeah. is smarter. So yeah. all he could do is just like lure him to like the edge of a cliff, like Bugs Bunny. Yeah. And it's done. <laughs> also, also, I don't know. Also, I don't another thing, you know, I did it across this. Sean, line. here's another thing. I mean, you're saying you're saying that the Glenn Strange is like brute force. It's like what? Did he go to a gym and work out over a period of like but three he, or four he films? Is no, Sean, much Sean, bigger stature than this is just about a physical fight, right? Yeah, but physical fighting. What? 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 But you don't watch boxing. But physical fighting is you do have to outwit people. You do. Yes, you do. You have to move. You have to bob. You have to weave. Didn't you see Rocky? Yes. Or raging bull. I, w- so, I would also so, I would also argue for an existential. Oh uh, fuck! <laughs> here we no, go. I know you guys. Are okay, gonna film school. Let me hear. Let me hear. Hear the end of this. But at the end of Bride of <laughs> Frankenstein, God. at the end of Bride of Frankenstein, Karloff's monster says, "Fuck this, we're all going down." And he pulls the lever. No, right? he I didn't think, say that. Uh, he did not say that. That was in, that was okay. in the retake. He said that. <laughs> 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 I think that if if he were faced off with a Glenn Strange doppelganger. That it would overwhelm him so much that he could not, <laughs> he could not fight himself that way, and he would allow himself to be. He would pull overtaken. the lever. He Don't would pull, pull the, lever. the lever. Exactly. Okay. He would, okay. He would commit Franken suicide. That's oh, what he oh, would do. Okay. Okay. Listen. Listen. This, this uh, seems more okay. like you Franken fighting you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so you brought up some very interesting points. So, so yeah. Sean, same you think, for your poetry group. Uh, so, Sean, you I think out when I Glenn heard Strange? Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking going, hippie. I'm going with Strange. I'm not. Okay. Thank, yeah. you. Matt, Thank you, Matt. Matt, you believe Karloff would win? <laughs> yes. Okay, Graham. Karloff. Karloff. James. Strange. And I say Karloff. Oh, oh. you lose. Oh. 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 But it's not a shutout. <laughs> well, this has been fun. Um, I do want to know. No, no, okay, I, 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 this okay. has been fun. Graham, like, no, I just want to say I want to. I want to let our guests talk. Do you, maybe we should. Steve, yes, we should. Steve, what do you have no, to say? No, Graham. <laughs> it's Graham for God's sakes. Come on. I know. No, no. All right, Graham. What so do you got? You know how the game is played. Throw it at us. Come on. Give us two. Who would win? All right. I'm going to go into the world of television. Mm. Nice. Ooh, okay, okay. 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 Well played. Love it. All oh. right. I'm going to go. Steve McGarrett from Hawaii Five-0. <laughs> Ooh. 
Yeah, Interesting. Cl- classic, classic horror TV show. All right, wait a minute. Okay. We're not else? done yet. Okay, okay, We're not ahead. done yet. Okay, and? <laughs> okay. You guys have done superheroes, so if you're going to go super, yeah, 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 yeah. Ant-Man right, right. and the Hulk are in yeah. horror. No, sure, it could be fantasy. It's Sim- fantastic, Sim- but go ahead. I'm, I'm with you. Steve Garrett. Okay, okay, who else? Versus Captain Kirk. Oh. Because oh. we're, ta- we're talking personality types here. Yeah. Oh, no, we're just... talking two headstrong guys. Yes. yes. That would have been a great crossover. Right? Or Jack Lord hmm. guest starring on Star Trek. Yes. All right. All right. No, it's like, got... like a commander. Now, this is something. classic Kirk, right? Yeah, this yeah, is Kirk. William Shatner. William Kirk. Shatner. Oh, William Shatner's Grant. Kirk. Now, was, that's actually a good. You, that's actually a good. Uh, our, see? Larry, do you what? know? Was Jack Lord up for that role? Anyone? Ooh, that's a good Boy, question. That's a good I question. I think I don't he know. might have been. Should've I been. think his name was... Me- uh, well, well let's, let's ask our Star Trek our, expert, James. Yeah, James, uh, you okay, know. Okay, don't rub no, it no, in. No, our <laughs> listeners, if our listeners know, please let us know if yeah. it's true. Jack yeah. Lord actually was a Meisner train. He sa- studied with Sanford Meisner. What happened? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Right. Not cool. <laughs> okay, so Graham, so you have Jack Lord uh, from Hawaii Five O. Steve McGarrett. And then you have Captain Kirk, William Shatner, classic. Yeah. They're going to come together and they're going to battle. Two. So, yeah, I mean, these <laughs> <Men's> are men. <sighs> okay, oh. now I kind of have, I kind of have, I, I have a, a feeling about, but what, what do you think? What is your logic? And is this How like a you, physical fight? It's a physical well, fight, right? Yeah, a physical yeah, fight. No weapons. No weapons. No, no, no. I'm with you. Garrett had a gun. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. So, no weapons. These no are weapons. two guys. I'm with you. And they just get beamed into that triangle or whatever. Right, yes. <laughs> and they're both the 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 yes. and, and, and they are both crazy about their hair. Oh, God. Oh, That's oh, right. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, Do you remember I, I how McGarrett, McGarrett always had my hair? had perfect wait, hair. Wait, 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 remember Was that he real old? hair? Oh, yeah. It, uh, but that that's hair. already a plus right there. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. <laughs> so he already, is, already kicked Well, this so is pre hair piece. Okay, Shatner. so what it, this is still. <laughs> but, no, 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 but, but, no, no, but no. Captain Kirk. No, Captain that Kirk. Was yeah, that was yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it's been yes. hairpiece for a long time. Yeah. Since the 60s. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't as big as, you know. Yeah. What it is, oh, but now yeah. but I think I think he lost it at twelve. Grand, really Grand. Apparently, <laughs> in the Blu-ray, you can see the the paint. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can actually see the little adhesive. And but, but look, 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 look. Let's not let let grill him on this. Well, like, well, he's no, a Grant, wonderful you, actor, think, and he though? looks fantastic. What, your, what, do, you what do you think? What do you, yeah. I gotta say this, and these are two of my favorite characters of all everything. Okay. Wow. okay. Um, I picked them because it's 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 a dilemma in my head. Captain Kirk has that great space fighting where he jumps off of walls and uses his hips and, right? and yes, all yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Sure. McGarrett is pure anger. He <laughs> is, yes. if you watch that show, yeah. and it was prior to NYPD Blue, it was the longest running cop show on TV. Oh, it was like 11 seasons or 12, something. 12, 68 oh my, yeah, to 70. Oh, I did not uh, know Magnum this. P.I. <laughs> took, its, took its time slot the very next week. Really? Is that right? Yep. Yeah, I, wow. I did not know this. I did That's not know crazy. that either. I knew it was on for a long time. Yeah. So I went to the one and only Hawaii Five O convention at the Burbank Hilton <laughs> back in 1997. Hey, <laughs> oh, right. you are that nerd. Is great. That's awesome. Um, so I probably lean towards Steve McGarrett, and here's why: he would he had this thing. He would get so like someone was. You thought you could commit a crime on my island? Like, yeah. he's so enraged. He has slight superpowers in the sense that he could pick up any phone and say, patch me through, and could get, yeah. get that yeah. to anywhere. Yeah. Uh, 5-0 is a rogue branch of law enforcement that ha- d- right. answers to no one except the governor. Uh, there was an episode where they tracked a guy, and they're in Hong Kong. He's in international waters. Chasing down, has no right to be there. Doesn't care on a boat. Does whatever he wants. Very shat. Very shat. I was just about to say. Yeah, very, yeah. Uh, very Captain, prime Captain directive. Yeah. Breaking. Yeah. 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 Wasn't the governor played by Richard Denning too? Yes. Yeah, Richard Denning. Love from, Richard Denning. Yeah, which is he was great. And there's a scene in there where he would always barge into the governor's office and be like, hey, governor, this is what we need to happen. And one right. time he got all mad and the governor goes, oh, you Irish, you're so hot-headed. Which is <laughs> so racist. So racist. Wow. Also, like, every... Have ep- another drink. <laughs> and, like, every, every episode, McGarrett would say, seal off the island. Like, oh. he could just seal off all of Hawaii. Like, he just like that. had... Just like that. Every episode... I even had this Hawaii Five-0 drinking game. Uh, he, yes. Anytime time he had five guys in his room talking, or he solved the crime with a chalkboard or an easel. Um, I think Shatner, I think Captain Kirk's Shatner's Captain Kirk would give him an excellent fight. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's certainly crafty. He's crafty. And he's he's on his feet. He is crafty. Yeah. He's yeah, yeah. fought a lot of green okay. aliens. He's not above cheap shots. He's not above right, cheap right. shots. But I ultimately think McGarrett would just swallow him with his focused cop rage. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So okay. we've, we, we've let you talk enough. Um, <laughs> uh, you look, you bring up some really good points. But I think the biggest flaw in this argument is your big thing about how full of rage, okay, there was another character on Star Trek that also had full of rage. And as brilliant as he was, Captain Kirk was still able to overpower him. And that's Khan from Space Seed. Mm-hmm. I see your point. I really do. But I do think that with McGarrett, too, it's kind of like he lets other people do the fighting. He doesn't do as much fighting as Kirk mm-hmm. fights all the time. I think physically, physically, Kirk would, he wouldn't necessarily kick McGarrett's ass, but I do think he would beat McGarrett. And also, and also, you throw out that anger thing. Kirk, he gets angry, but he also has the whereabouts. You guys even said it. You said he he's not afraid to take a cheap shot. I think Kirk would be able to think of a way to beat McGarrett at his own game. I do think Kirk would win. That's bad. That's interesting. I because I've been. I was. I'm kind of leaning your way. I'm, I'm kind of torn. I, 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 McGarrett's I was, a bigger guy. Yeah, he is bigger. He's bigger. Yeah. He's, oh, 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 like Kirk hasn't fought like bigger I'm people. Saying, I'm just saying they're both crafty guys because McGarrett had to solve a lot of crazy crimes. He always had to fight, as he called it, the syndicate. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah. and whoa, fat. Well, and you also right, bring right. up. You also bring up. Well, he go, he goes, he does things. It's kind of a rogue thing. It's like, well, Captain Kirk has done They're some both, things. He yeah, broke yeah, against both, the rules too. It's a title fight. This yeah. is a 15 round. Yeah. This, okay. this fight goes 15 rounds. Now, mm-hmm. I, I go back and forth, and now I'm kind of leaning back to the Kirk side. I'll tell you why. Because you brought up Khan, mm-hmm. and especially if you go back to Space Sea. That's what I'm talking about. That yeah. episode yeah. where he defeats him, and they're yeah. fighting in the uh, engineering. Yes. Right? And he like grabs something from yeah. engineering. Again, he's not above cheap shots and also and thinking on his toes using whatever's around and i think that might be the thing because i i do get it i like the rage i do too, I do too. of jack lord it's just but he's not he's not no, no, he's no. not a loose cannon Can't, that's the no, thing no, about no, McGarrett. He's not he's not a loose cannon. i'm just saying when, when, when it's focused i could see that being if, a, a force to be reckoned but, but that's right. but there's the same thing with con and do you remember when he thinks he's defeated kirk he says i have 10 times your strength he's so obsessed with himself and his body but wait and no no that's no. con's arrogance McGarrett yes. doesn't hey, have that arrogance. but it's no. anger it, there's but anger there Arro- no, arrogance no, and anger are different I'm Con, Con is an arrogant. That's is always been his downfall. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. absolutely. Right? Yes. McGarrett doesn't have that anger. It's he. Ha- what McGarrett has is justice. He knows I'm on the right side. Oh. I'm doing what's right. A Kirk wouldn't know. He wouldn't. No, I'm he, just saying. He, no. I, when you're comparing Con to McGarrett, and mm-hmm. that's why McGarrett right, right. would lose. That's why I'm saying where I right, think right. that's a flaw. I think they're very uh, Garrett and and uh, Kirk are very evenly matched, and I, I think, think the pretty, edge yeah, the close. edge has to. I would give it just to McGarrett, just a little bit a little on bit. size, but right. honestly, if I was a betting man and I bet on McGarrett and he lost, I All wouldn't right. feel bad. All right, <laughs> I, I, I do, I do, right. I do feel when you you know when you look at Captain Kirk and you look at that Gorn episode, and the guy fucking makes a cannon yeah. out of like. I'd still right, be sharpening right. the stick yeah. by the time right. the Gorn yeah. came. Yeah, I, he has uh, more fight experience. Okay. That's a great he, point. He does have a lot of fighting experience true. and fighting vastly different type of enemies. Mm-hmm. And that's I think he's true. also that's good true. with psychological stuff. He can bring down a planet with a question. Yeah, Which yeah, he's yeah, done. A computer. Yeah. 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 Has McGarrett done self-destruct. that? No. I'm afraid <laughs> if you're, not, Mr. If you're supposed to help, why aren't you helping? Has McGarrett gone up against the M5? No. But no, okay, I, okay. I, 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 I'm kind of with Matt. Very slightly, uh, I'm, I'm going with Kirk. But, a again, bit, a very a good argument because well, yeah. I'm, I'm still not well, entirely convinced. Well, perhaps we can have James go to see if he can push us over the edge. James, what? what do no, you I mean? agree. I, it's a contest. I, I see this as, and it may sound like a cop out. I see this as one of those cases where they have to both team up at the end against the common enemy. Which is what? Wait, what? I don't which, know who the common is, enemy uh, is. But what, Starsky and Hutch. They cannot. <laughs> look, these two. Wait, are, you're they, saying that they they come to a battle two, and they have to gang up against somebody? Yeah, no, 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 two, no. These two are cut from so much of the same cloth in so many so many similar ways. Not not always, but similar ways that they would be natural allies more than natural enemies. Graham, you bring up a really that's a, that's so, a great this one. This is a great no, that's one. A really good one. I am. I, this, I was worried. This, at I first, don't do but, that. I don't think this is a <laughs> slam dunk by any means. No, no, not at all. I. I, good, good. I am going to go with Kirk. It'd be tough. 
but it'd be Kirk. But now, if he just grabbed the hairpiece and ripped it off, <laughs> that's true. There just would be a second where he'd go, ah! just like then, just like grabbing Norman Bates' wig off. I exactly. gotta tell you, like I, all of your guys' arguments for Kirk, I like, I get. Like it, it's that thin. It is. It's a razor thin. It's, it's razor it thin. Where any is. any like. Had you guys gone first and any of you gone McGarrett first, I probably would have taken Kirk and then, you know what I mean? Like it was that tight. I hate to piggyback on your concept, but this just hit me because it's a similar kind of hero. James West Kirk. Oh, Oh, very similar like to Kirk. Yeah. Very similar. James West, Wild Wild West. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, because he was very Kirk-like. And he is a good fighter. Same physique. Same physique. Good fighter. Lean, mean, yeah, um, smart. dancing machine, yeah, a very, yeah. S- very <laughs> smart and yeah, able to think on his feet. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, relies a bit too much on gadgets, but you know, yeah, Kirk has a phaser. But, but, yeah, but getting, back, quarter, getting back to Graham's one. thing of McGarrett, I, I said I was Kirk. piggybacking I on the oh, idea. Are, are we? Are you actually doing this now? Are you? Are you picking this? Are no, I just. I well, thought well, you're just throwing it's, it's it out. It's a side road. We're done. Ripping, We're already ripping. done. Okay. I think it's another razor thin one. Yeah, you want to get you want to get really razor thin. Pappy Boington and James West, the same actor oh. playing those two characters. Oh. Black Sheep, yeah. Baba yeah, Black Sheep too. and James West. I love that show. Um, I, I gotta still say James West. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I think all so. the booze later. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. you think Pappy is just too yeah, little, maybe too a little, so, yeah, a little, you know, maybe a little longer in the tooth, not too long, but close. Or, or you know? Robert Conrad from Battle of the Network Stars oh. against Jim West. Because <laughs> 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 right. he was on that all the time. Well, what about Kirk versus T.J. Hooker? Ooh, oh. that's a good one. I think Kirk. Though, then because, I go Kirk because yeah. I, it's all the arguments you guys. Yeah, just yeah, made. yeah. I think so. Because yeah. you're still going space fighting yeah. versus beat cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. True. As much as I love T.J. Hooker, well, I mean or, he can wrestle yeah. a car. Okay. Yeah. Again, right. T.J. Hooker. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let so, Adrian Zamed do all the fighting. So, yeah, I was just gonna say. <laughs> yeah. So that this is this has been great. I think we kind of lean more towards Kirk. Okay. Then I'm right. just I'm just saying. I'm, Go just, ahead. I'm just saying. I think it's your turn now. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Now Mr. I was, Mr. I was, turn Hitler. Okay, yeah, come on. Come on now. Let's look, look look I was just I was just trying to think out of the box. Go here, ahead. Oh, okay? were you? Yeah, yeah, I was. Wow, I was funny how that wasn't working when I was speaking. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Imagine if you will. Okay. I'm I, I had one I, I'm gonna go this the second one here. Okay. Imagine the Wampa from Empire Strikes Back. Remember the giant, like, snow creature? Snow monster. Yeah, and from Empire Strikes Back. Uh, this is from 1980, directed by Irv Kirshner, versus Pumpkinhead. Oh. Directed by oh. Stan Winston. Now, here you have a, 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 a creature. Well, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Let's hear your argument. Ridi- no, I'm, uh, I'm no, just. No, I want to hear it. Let's hear it. Let's well, hear it. here's the thing. When we were thinking about uh, two creatures, two things that come into a room and kind of battle each other, here you've got a creature that is, you know, has to be in the cold, you know, and is, has this woolly coat, you know. And then you've got this other creature. They both have these giant claw like hands, but Pumpkin Head doesn't have any, like, fur. He's got kind of like all naked. Have you seen Pumpkin Head? <laughs> I'm just curious. Have you seen Pumpkin Head? Yes. Pumpkinhead is a supernatural being. It's supernatural a of revenge. being wins. Yeah. Done. I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Against the snow bear, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that a half formed, not even a full fledged Jedi defeated. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Almost on accident he kills yeah. him. Well, I thought that would be fun, but apparently it's not. So oh, wow. Ooh, Ooh. Can't take it, huh? No, no, it's okay. It's no, right. I'm just saying. <laughs> you, you, you got an argument? Let's well, hear the what argument. Your, no, I just thought no, choice? I just thought it was fun. I no, 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 no! You just but like our, rip into our, my our, my our, fun our, thing. Our the, the, opinions the, 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 is the, that pumpkin. What, no, no, what no, is no, your no, opinion? You're, you're, no, but it seems okay. like a slam dunk. It seems almost yeah, too yeah. easy. I, well, I think you're if, better than this. If, is what I'm what, saying. What if Larry. what if it was in a cold environment? Uh, supernatural being is able to win. Because yeah. he doesn't care about cold or hot or anything, he's fr- he's supernatural. Well, he, he's supernatural. He is born, he's a he, demon, he, he, but he, he is physical. He kind of comes out of the ground from the the grave, so he is like a physical flesh and blood yeah, creature. And that sloppy though. snow monsters. He's going to come fumbling around in Pumpkinhead. He he is an unstoppable force. Like there's nothing unless. The Wampa has some sort of supernatural no, powers. No, he doesn't. He or doesn't. is able to. Is he's, he's like just the Doctor giant... Strange of no, Wampas? No, 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 no. Then maybe no. it would work. No, but... he's just a giant furry. Doctor Strange of Wampas. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet that guy. Write it. Write it, nerds. <laughs> right. You heard us. Write it. But Larry, right. no, Larry, no, 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 no. Larry, what yeah. would you think? Who would you think would win in that situation? Well, I envisioned it more like you know the furry, wintry creature versus the the skinny, naked. 
you know, creature. <laughs> and, you know, so, and so they, you're going you know, with Wampa. I, well, because I thought the Wampa had, I, I, you know, I did forget about the supernatural stuff. I just thought okay, it would yeah, be forget great. about uh, the thing that makes it what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. I just All thought right, it'd be go great ahead. to have. Imagine Batman if his parents had lived. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and he was. They were middle class. He didn't yeah. have a lot of money. <laughs> he and... grew up and he worked in an office. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> And he never trained with the League of Shadows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he had a comfortable... Yeah, I, can see what you, I can see what you're saying. If it was nice just like... Gave, yeah, had a an very... Ice, in an ice cave. Wonderful charitable yeah, organization. Yeah, yeah. Good but, 401k. Yeah. yeah. And then Camry. eventually became president. <laughs> Mad with power. It, it's, it's funny you should bring this up because I, there, was another, there was another matchup I had with uh, some kind of thing that was a little supernatural versus something that wasn't. I thought it'd be fun to put it here. But I'm going to scratch that off my list well, you because know. we jumped... No, no, Can no, I take no, a look at your no, list? Because no, 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 no. now I'm worried. No, no. What, what, okay. Okay. <laughs> I just thought of a really good one, but yeah. it's all right. Please. No, no, please. Please. save it, save it, save it, save it. All right, all right. I got, I got one. All right, all right. This is a save us, Sheridan. Fierce dragon against a powerful sea monster. Okay, that's stupid. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Okay, I'm just More kidding. specifically, HR Puffin stuff against Sigmund the sea monster. <gasps> oh, who would win? Well, they are both benign creatures. It doesn't matter. In this theoretical situation, they have to fight to the death. Okay. Is Are they forced by okay. an outside entity? Sure. <laughs> Sean. So like the mutants <laughs> from Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Make them fight. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> okay. Hitting. I Hitting. Think. Okay. Well, go ahead. Cause, cause I, I'm yeah, please, go ahead. H.R. Puffin stuff is a dragon. Yes. And Sigmund is a sea monster. That's so, true. And they're kind of, I mean, Sigmund's a little shorter. Yes. But... He has tentacles. Shatner esque. I mean, who, who would win? Go, Larry, what do you think? He has, he has a hair piece. Which I, <laughs> yes. okay. I, my first feeling is my first he feeling is. He has a lichen is, piece. <laughs> Sigmund has a wider base. Okay. Correct. He can't and, be knocked over. No, he easily. can't be knocked over. And HR Puff stuff has those very little white boots. That's if true. You remember. Go-go boots. True. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. And But I will say this. I do think Sigmund would just. Have such difficulty trying to hurt HR oh. Puffin stuff. No, no, no. I do. No matter what he would do, right. and and yeah, and HR Puffin stuff. Look, Puffin stuff knows what to do. Look, it's like, well, if the only He's way, the sheriff. if, if yeah. the only way to get out of this is to kill the little creature, I'm gonna have to do it. So <laughs> I good. think, I think he would. I think. So he how would, would he do it though? He, like, well, I, we, 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 we never we, see we him. Does he fire? Shoot fire? No, He's a dragon. I, I see him. But more he like, does though. See, that's the thing. That's the thing that you're missing here. By definition, he is a dragon. Yes. Right. right. Part of the dragon thing right. is All dragons, flight. Yeah. Flight and fright. Flight and fire. Yeah. We know so, he doesn't have the flight. No, we don't know that. He doesn't he, have any just wings. because he hasn't. No. Just uh, be, he has no white boots. Maybe they come out. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, well, under, his, under his arms. Maybe. Yeah. I would, I would say like with the, the size of his head, I right. would say he has fire. You, uh, right, you, right. You, okay, like, like with camera, you, it's either one or the other. If I can't see the wings, I'm assuming that he's going to have. Okay, fire. let's at least so give just, it fire. So, so, fire. so look, he's got look, fire. and also the other thing too, if you have a little squid, a little squidly octopus or something like that, and you throw fire at it, it's going to like burn it's to good, a crisp. Right, calamari. Uh, yeah. So with all due respect, as much well, as I, I just love say calamari, there are, these are two <laughs> creatures so that I do now. love, Sean. This right, is, right. That's really a really good. The battle, uh, I think, yeah. uh, HR Puffin well, stuff I do, would I do think Sigmund win, yeah. with that one front tooth could get a couple good jabs oh, at okay. Puffin sure, stuff, yeah. but I, I do think I don't think it's stuff a good, would win. I, I, Puffin stuff clearly would win. <laughs> this is a, like, he's the, he's the guy, his own brothers. God, you're so cruel. His own brothers. He can't even stand up to them. He's going to stand up to them. Are the really mayor mean. of Living Island? They're, they're, they are really, really <laughs> mean. This is a guy, Puffin stuff can survive a house sneezing. Okay. That's true. Okay. That's true. Yeah, even yeah. even without the fire, puff and stuff would probably win. Yeah. yeah. And you know, you and bring he's up smart, a, he's smart. He's smart. The, the other he's thing smarter. too is Sigmund has to rely on two little boys in their clubhouse, right? That's true. He's pretty helpful. And and yeah. and yeah. actually it's HR Puff stuff's the one who helps Freddie Flute and Jimmy. So That's you true. know, yeah, Sigmund, so, Sigmund's just fucking pathetic. No, I, well, yeah, come I, on, I think you know, Puff and Stuff <laughs> would just wax him if he had to. I think I think I think Puff and Stuff is if he had to push comes to shove, he could get pretty ugly. Right, I, that's I what see. I, you know what I mean? No, yeah, I can right, see right, it behind his right, eyes. Yeah, right. he's, just, he's got that like thousand yard stare. Like yeah. he's seen a lot of yeah. shit on Living Island yeah, before. I mean, he, uh, he must have done something. Jimmy to get ever be, showed up. Yeah, he must have done something to get to become sheriff of uh, yeah. a mayor of I think, mayor. I think yeah, he saw so. some shit and was like, "I just want to rest in peace." 
You know what I mean? And like like an old <laughs> right. Clint Eastwood character, like an yes! unforgiven. You know what I mean? And yes, like, very much so. But right, if, the, right. if the shit went down, he would lock and yeah. load. Yeah, he and, would high plains drifter I mean, that whole I mean, fucking I mean, town. I mean, Sigmund is he would paint it red. <laughs> I mean, Sigmund is, is he just hasn't experienced enough enough of, of life in the world He's yet. He's a pussy fish running. Around. Yeah, whoa, exactly. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm afraid. You know, you guys just sound like a bunch of bullies, though. I no. swear to God, you're like well, just hey, jumping on. I'm sorry that we're talking about the real world. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. right. Hey, that why is, don't you get yes, your genie yes, friend? Yes. Get Rip Taylor that to is, come and protect yeah, you. That is, that is right. That's the real world, sir. Yes. Yes, it is. A bunch Rip of bullies. Taylor. Great. That's great. All right. Okay, all right. so great one. I think we've all come to agreement that HR <laughs> Buffs would win. But, but, but I think it's But I like that. I like that. No, go ahead. Go ahead, bully man. Go ahead. Throw it at us. Okay, bully this man. this one is kind of aimed at you. Ooh. Larry. Of course it is. Right. Of course it is. Okay. Now, we know Larry is a gigantic fan. I'm a fan, too, but Larry's a gigantic fan of The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Ooh, I am. And I love him as well. However, in a fight with the monster from Piedras Blancas, now, I don't know if you're aware of this film. No, sir, I'm not. But done after The Creature from the Black Lagoon, maybe if if you have a thing, we could show him, but imagine The Creature from the Black Lagoon with, like, the most horrendous fucking razor sharp teeth, gigantic claws, and his harm of choice is to behead people. Yeah. Now, I don't know if we ever remembered any beheadings in The Creature from the Black Lagoon, but between those two, I think we could say that the creature is fish bait. Fish bait? Yeah. Fish bait. Yeah. Sliced and okay. diced. Okay, well let me let me ask you something. In the uh Creature from the Black Lagoon that you know so well, <laughs> do you actually see people with their heads off? No. You know why? You see hands. You don't know. You don't know. We're, we're showing Graham now yeah, a picture yeah. of the uh famous scene. From it's like a famous famous holding scene. a severed head. I look, I, I I think you bring up a really good point. Because you know? I want to see you, because I think that you're going to say it's the creature. And I, again, I'm just projecting here. I may be wrong. But you're going to say, oh, but the creature is more intelligent. Because this is a very ferocious, monstrous creature that almost just reacts with rage. Yeah, In fact, the, the Piedras Blancas creature is, I think, to me, way more savage than the creature. Yeah. Mm-mm. And horrendous. Just the teeth alone. I think one bite or one swipe. Because mm-hmm. he's got these, the, the creature has these nice kind of elegant nails. They're sharp. That is true. They're is sharp, true. but they're small. Wouldn't you think that the creature could swim faster? Yes. But but to go against your point, or I mean, if they're in a battle, it's like, well, the creature swims away. I mean, is that his, is that his way of, well, if, you know, battling? We're talking live to fight another day, mm-hmm. but when we talk about now, okay, now he's gotten away. He's ahead of the thing. It's funny. How does he come back well, and defeat it? You know, the one thing I, I will say about the creature is like in, in the creature walks among us, and we'll, we'll talk more about this on our creature show, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, the creature goes through kind of this metamorphosis in a way where they, they find that he's kind of man-like, you know? Yes. And whether he's he, clearly he, smarter than the monster from Piedras. Yes, Black. yes, agree, yeah. but it, but it's like saying if you put a man in a cage with a silverback gorilla, the silverback gorilla may not be smarter than the man, but just the brute strength the of him alone theory, right. could like destroy and crush. But like Captain Kirk yeah. with the Gorn, mm-hmm. if the Gorn is making a you know a knife out of some flint, yeah, and Kirk makes a cannon, yeah, but 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 it's like. I don't see these. Can two... the creature figure out a no. way to what, create a cannon? Well, not, I, I not don't a cannon, think, no. but the I, underwater I, version of that. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, or a, I don't set, set a trap. I the creature set a trap yes. for the must from Piedras. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> no, he, Larry, he does set a trap in the creature from the Black That's Lagoon. True. He That's does. He blocks the Rita it's, from getting through. The so, yeah. so what if he's not like he sets a trap? Like he, it's a no, but he, he's he smart enough. I can't believe I'm defending the creature. Yeah, he's smart enough to put that block blockade there. This is your monster and yeah. I'm defending him. But I'll, Larry, I would say this in, in defense. <laughs> what the fuck has happened to in, you? In defense of the creature, though, the creature survives three movies. At the, he's shot up at the end of the first one and he's shot up again at the end of the second one. And he comes he's back. resilient. So he's very resilient. Bullets really don't actually stop him, even though you think they do at the end of the first two movies. Yeah. So, so I agree. The creature would win. <laughs> well, I, just go. looking at the picture, I'm going. This thing from the Beatrice monster, the Beatrice did... Blancas monster is super. <laughs> what do you Beatrice? Beatrice for lunch? Beatrice, we call him Beatrice. Uh, uh, Piedras Blancas means white rocks. 
Yeah, well, it's White not, Rock's going to take Creature out. He's going to eat I, Creature for lunch. I, I just... That's the Creature's he's pretty, head he's holding. Again, again if we're talking about a ring, then definitely the Creature's done, right? I think so. I, I start saying, so. well, maybe he's underwater, building an underwater maybe rocket a ring underwater. trap. Come on. Well, no. Face to face, mano a mano. Done. Lizard now, guy to lizard guy. Because the creature thing about the Creature is that he had that humanity. He was falling gets in love with Julie Adams. You know, he was... Yeah. But like you know what I'm saying, he he was he was softening up from the beauty. Yeah, they talked about him being the missing link and all yeah. this stuff. Where this this Piedras Blancas creature is just a freaking demon in, in the sea. A demon in the sea. Oh, so I guess there's it's like supernatural. No, 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 no figuratively. No, slam dunk. No. Why are we even bothering to tell? Well, I'm still holding on to that one. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Well, I think one we, thing you have to know about Larry James. James moving yeah. on, hey, not J- not in the cards. No, no, that's not true. James, what do you think? I haven't heard anything out of you. Come I'm, on, I'm thinking that that the victor it, it might have to do with which creature can be out of the water the longest and is the battle in the water because doesn't the creature have that, to go that, that back is, into uh, the water to survive? Good. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. We don't really know is, about yeah. the Piedras Blancas monster, but he does spend a lot of time out of the water. He does. Yeah, he goes. That seems the to town. be okay. Yeah, he maybe the, the town, advantage is heads. with Piedras Blancas then, because then maybe Just the creature that alone, would lose yeah. Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Took James to make sense of it all. Hey. Graham, Graham, what do you? What, so you are Pietrus Blancas. Pietrus Blancas. Yeah. Okay, Matt. In the water Pietrus. or out? Okay, I go fine. Blancas. I, yeah, look, dude, I get it. Okay, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> that candy lizard friend of yours okay, is gonna okay, get okay. his fucking Matt. lunch hand. Puffing to... stuff against. No, no, Pietrus no, no, Blancas. no, no, no. Piet, come on. Again, fire. Cre- come on. So creature, Pietrus Blancas. Pietrus Blancas. Okay, of so we got two Pietrus Blancas. Uh, Sean. Yeah, Pietrus Blancas. All right, James. He already said Pietrus uh, Blancas, right? Blancas, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? I'm I'm just going to go against Grant. I'm going to say the creature. So. Uh, and oh, I would have oh, nothing oh, less. Wow. Well, Larry, yeah. It's funny, though, Larry, because, or uh, Matt, because... One uh, of you one have no... Who are we? <laughs> <laughs> Did you <laughs> suffer a head injury before you came here? <laughs> I'm drinking. No, Matt, I'm saying it's funny that you, that you picked that one because one of mine was the creature from Black Lagoon against Octoman. Uh, Octoman, Octoman. Matthews, yes. which was kind of like a, a ripoff of Creature from the Back Lagoon. You, you know now that uh, that one is that I think that one leads more. It leans more Sigmund and the Sea Monster. Yeah. Really? <laughs> well, he can. Right? Like, he Have can you like, ever seen that movie? Yeah. No. He, he can no, like, it's, sw- it's, can like it's, swat, you know, yeah. swat at the creature with his tentacles. That was back though. when they were just like copying everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. just like uh, Lurch versus uh, Herman Munster. Right. Like, right. 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 Oh, yeah. Was Octoman, was that? Uh, that was like 70s. It was actually directed by Harry Essex. But who, who, yeah. did, the, who, did, who did the costume? Was it? It was Rick Baker. It was Rick yeah. Baker, right? Rick, Baker, Rick yeah. Baker's earliest designs. It's kind of a cool costume. It's cool. It just kind of makes no it sense. Like, you know what's yeah, kind of yeah. cool about uh, Pietrus Brancus? Every time uh, my wife and I, we would drive on 101, I'd always make a big point about, oh, 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 it says Pietrus Brancus, there's the lighthouse. And my wife yeah. go, what the hell? And I said, oh, this movie, blah, blah, blah. And I go, and she actually for Christmas got me. I this is so silly, but she got me this great little Christmas ornament, which is a lighthouse on a little little island, and it says Pietrus Blanc is really? on. Oh, and and, and there's awesome. no monster on it, but she it's a little souvenir. That's I'm like, cool. oh, oh, this is so great. You know, yeah, we gotta get you a monster. Yeah, yeah I know. That's yeah. what I was yeah, thinking about. My that, wife so. and I, we were driving up the coast one time. We also I think I Did saw you the, stop? No, but I saw I didn't know we were going. Like I saw the sign Pietrus Blanc is yeah. yeah. I saw the lighthouse. Yeah, you should do that. Picture. We gotta Us have a monster party. Descending on Piedras Blancas. <laughs> yeah, okay, like, nobody there. would. Nobody <laughs> would understand. <laughs> what? What? No, I don't know. We don't know. But All I, right. But I think they. Yeah. I think they actually have like a. A festival like every year they show the film the townsfolk oh know, wow because wow. maybe movie, we should go the movie <laughs> has like oh, it's, it uses a lot of the actual people from, the, from that town in the movie well, that's cool so there let's you go. go let's yeah. go monster right. party coming your way Peter all right Spock now is, who, who needs who needs to go now i here? think Who's it's it? my turn all right james think, yes it's james let's okay give it to us buddy who would win who who would win would win alien from 1979 or okay. The Thing from 1982. Oh, wow. That's great. Mm. Huh. I think, it, okay, you know I, what? I'm, I'm going to argue that it's great. Ooh. Because I think it's a slam dunk. You're arguing already? I'm arguing. <laughs> that it's great? Yes. Okay. okay. Because here's my thing. I think it's a slam dunk. Okay. okay. I think it's The Thing, without a doubt, hands mm. down. Even though with the acid blood and yeah, everything alien, else. The alien has the acid for blood. That's true, but 
first of all, the thing can change into so many different forms. It can replicate itself in ways, whereas, like, the alien needs the queen. That's right, the alien eggs, cannot, yeah, yeah. It can turn so, into another alien. There's so many things, whereas, and, and we know from aliens that if you just shoot it enough, eventually, yeah, it'll bleed acid all over the place, but finally it will die. Whereas right, the right. thing, even pieces of it, little, even pieces of its, even blood just a, a drop of blood. You know, yeah. James, James, the mapping is a good point. I, I understand where you're going with it. My first initial gut reaction was, oh, the acid for blood, the acid for blood. But even if the acid for blood would destroy bits of the thing, bits of right, the thing would right. be able to peel off. Mm-hmm. Or And so right. so I think survival-wise, the thing would be able to survive. I it would so adapt. Too. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It could turn, turn into another alien. Yeah, and then and then and yeah. But, but the alien can also adapt because an alien. No, an not alien the same three, way. Not that fast. Not that fast. But it did assume other. Like you know, it, it, there was an alien dog. There but were it other. Had to hatch well, it had, it had to hatch. It had to hatch. It was a process. You right. know what? That would yeah. take. That would take months. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right, I'll moving buy, on. I'll buy Graham, that. Yeah. No. I I agree. I mean, I think it's, it's neat though. It's neat. It's a great. It's a great. It'd be great fight to see. It's a great visual. It's great fight. Those are two great movies. It's the heyday of practical effects, oh, in my yes, opinion. Totally. And uh, but you're right. The, I think the alien is a little too much of a one-dimensional fighter. It right. just has the second mouth and yeah. the acid blood. Yeah. But the thing can just kind of, it can take on any form, and that's its strength because alien can't just. It's almost like going back to sort of the the limitations of the hunk, the Hulk versus Ant Man, because the Hulk is sort of in some ways a one dimensional just sort of hammer, right? right. Yes. Where right. the alien is just it's just a hammer, and and the thing is a far. It's almost, it's, I think almost anything that the thing went up against, I think. It I, really I, and what could beat the thing? And that's the thing is, I was the I, blob. I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, McGarrett, cover the entire McGarrett, planet. Steve McGarrett, <laughs> with a, f- a different chest. Uh, <laughs> But like I was thinking about what to put up against the thing because I love the thing and I'm trying to think of like what what would be the yeah what would the way yeah and I couldn't like the closest I got and tell me if you think this even remotely works is the invasion of the body snatcher aliens because they are hive mind so no matter like you wouldn't be able to get a a step ahead like you take over another person and if that person was a pod person then the rest of the pod people would know wouldn't they right i think so i think so right also what does the thing sleep i mean if the thing sleeps then and eventually the pod people could take over exactly it would take over does it sleep do we know that it sleeps? and the the pod people though like alien need more of a gestation period and the thing doesn't it's instant yeah it's pretty almost instant yeah that's a good point that's a good point the Mm. pod people do need a gestation period i think that that, what beats the thing that's the real i don't think that i don't know i think that's boy well well well, we do know one it's like either fire or the cold so I mean, but I, just very temporary. Yeah, 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 you're yeah, just yeah. no, no. You know, you're, you're yeah. very good point. Very good point. You know, I don't think I, anything does. Yeah. It, can I just launch off for that? You no, know, I just no, want to jump ahead. on that because no. it's yeah, it's really really cool. It's a really really cool thing. Now imagine who would win. What if we did this, guys? What if we did the thing from another world? Now this is the thing played by James Arness. Right, you know, right, okay. this is from 1951. Uh-huh. Vegetable okay. Man. Vegetable Man versus it, the Terror from Beyond Space. From 1958. I didn't think you were going to go that way. You didn't think I was going to go that I way? I thought you were going, it was going to be... Uh, H.R. Puffin stuff. No, I thought it was, <laughs> thought it was going to be the Carrot Man from uh, Lost in Space. <laughs> the Great Vegetable Rebellion. Because that's something, thing, that's something they're, you they're, would do. They're both the vegetable people. Yes. There's one's an intellectual carrot. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So look, so look, we've got It, the Terror from Beyond Space. Have you ever seen that? Played for, are you talking to me? No. Yes, no, it's one no, of my favorite... I'm, oh, 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 we have a, oh hello. Oh, we have, we a, have guest. a guest. That's right. I'm sorry. And his name is Arnold. No, okay? Can his we... name is Graham. Okay. Look, if you haven't seen this movie, a lot of people compare it to Alien because it's kind of a similar storyline. Right. But from the 50s. And a very cool, yeah. very nice little- It's a low very, budget. Low uh, budget movie, but very similar in beats to Alien. And when you and see, very effective And when you see time. it, when you see it, you're going to go, hey- Hey, oh, well, yeah. re- re- and this was made back in 1950. You're, it's it's going to blow your mind. Yeah, it's a really good movie. But but imagine, if you will, you have these two aliens. Okay, yeah, one is more like a you know giant. You know, you say giant carrot. That's the line that they throw in the movie. It's like a large carrot, thinking carrot. It's more than that. Okay, but imagine it's these single creatures in a way. Okay? I have the answer, by the way. Which one of course you do. Of course you do. Well, wh- but, I want to know um, what, what do you think. Uh, what do you think? Okay, one was played by James Arness, who went on to play Sheriff Dillon in okay. Gunsmoke. <laughs> yes. 
The other was uh, it was played by. Uh, We're Roy not going to read their Corian. entire no, IMDb, no, no, right? no, no. But here Let's we get to have, the monsters. Here we have two very animalistic space creatures. Correct. Well, okay. To, to me, though, the James Arnest, the thing is more human looking, though. The yeah. It is more like a, your classic kind of scaly, yeah. reptilian, yes, boogeyman monster. Yes. Yes. And I, I guess what we do know is. It, the Terra from Beyond Space, can't live in a no atmosphere. You know, it needs some kind of air, right. whether it be thin or something. Right. And I guess, are we assuming that the same thing is for um, the thing? I don't know, though, because... Because it's a, it's, a, it's a vegetable, and it's not, it doesn't necessarily have lungs. It's like a giant, it's like a giant carrot. Well, here's, here's my logic. Here's my logic, Matt. I think that uh, It, the Terra from Beyond Space, would be able to rip apart the thing. Like rip them up in pieces, like think, a salad. I think it does have more brute strength. I think than it, the thing. Yeah, and if we're talking a if we're talking a cage match, then mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. But I would say because I'm talking about that, the thing from that di- from that right. Movie. No, no, okay. I know, I know. But still, that creature was a plant, and they even found like that they could grow. Yeah, yeah, him, the, you know, the hand. Yeah, and the all hand. That. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They could grow another. Yeah. But that still takes time. It man. does take time. But I would also say that he does also have brute strength. Has I would say probably more intelligence because he uh, was able to pilot a spaceship. No, uh, you know, he has I clothes. Will, yes. you know, no, I will give you that. Yes, and sure, he's yeah, able yes. to handle the cold. So he has a lot of things going for it aside from brute strength. Mm-hmm. Now, it might be a little more ferocious, has big teeth. He can claw its way through like claws the, the and walls that of kind the ship. of thing. But I, I would maybe say that there, with a the little more cunning and intelligence, that creature might prevail. You're thinking about uh, the thing. I'm leaning towards that. Lean I understand your argument, yeah. and it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I'm leaning towards the thing because maybe the brains would come in somewhere. Sean, what do you think? I kind of going with it. Yeah. I just, I just think it's, yeah. it's so savage, and, and it has this huge claws. I just think it's, it would be kind of unstoppable. I think the thing is, the thing is more intelligent. But I don't think it would have time to like. I just think that it would just. It, it's go not right like after. we disagree with you. No, I, it's I'm, not that like I don't I'm disagree very, with I'm you, like but I'm kind of kind of with Sean James. The same same rationale. So you're more with uh, it, it's with the it. chair from Beyond yeah. Space. Yeah. Graham, I, I guess you can't comment because you haven't seen one of the movies. But, have, but from, 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 from what we're describing, from what you're describing in the photo, I think I gotta go with the big it monster. The, okay, yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's so it's so mammoth, and yeah. I think it just it looks like it just kind of crushes anything in its way. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, but but, that's a very but good still, point. I'm not. It also drinks blood. Yes, yeah, but but Matt, it's still okay. It's better in the long run. Maybe the yeah. thing from the yeah. other world might win, but, but I in get, a cage match, you might be right. I think it might might be just tearing it apart. It's better than Wampa and Pumpkinhead. Okay, <laughs> that's what you're saying. Right, okay, so right. you redeem yeah, yourself no, now, okay. Graham. That's a good one. All right, Graham, I, save the show. I've got one. I've got one. <laughs> Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi. Okay, oh. all of his Jedi powers. Yes. Okay. okay. He's against good. against Tashiro Mufune from Seven Samurai. Oh. Caveat, caveat, they are only fighting with samurai swords. Luke does not have his lightsaber. Now, Ooh. Kishir Mifune from Seven Samurai, not Yojimbo. Not Yojimbo. Okay. Mm. Seven Samurai, his character in Seven Samurai is maybe one of these greatest samurai out there. Yojimbo, Yojimbo. Seven Samurai? That? Tashiro Mifune? Mm-hmm. Really? No, why, 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 can't, why, why that why one? Because uh... I always thought in that movie he's kind of, he's got heart and he's got courage. I never got that he was the best samurai. Well, like, in that movie, I felt like several other samurai were actually better swordsmen, but he had heart and, and rose to the occasion. Okay, that, but that's why I put. That's why I picked him. But, because, Matt, interesting because of that character. So now you're Jim, you could say just say Yojimbo or something like that. But to me, his character because now you've got two. Because Luke oh, Skywalker, I see. I see. I get it. Right? It's right. not is not you could say they're well, both he's, coming into their yeah, own. They're the both coming here. Luke Skywalker in Empire Strikes Back is told He's not a full fledged. What are you doing? Jedi. Do not go after your friends. This is a mistake. Oh, that's good. That no, was... I get it now. I get it. I get it. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Right. But they have to use swords? They, they have, have to use swords. The only here's why the reason I said that, that caveat is because uh Luke Can't does use ha- the force. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he could use the force. Well, so, well, and well. and also a lightsaber like a sword can't sure, stop sure. it. But then you know if, he can use so the, if he can use the force, then I just use one pole of the Jedi mind pole. He can't pole. use the force, right? He can or cannot. If he can, then it's, it's, it's a He can use the force against a weak mind. 
Oh. But he can physically he physically pull the sword out of out against of, a weak mind. That's what I'm saying. That's why he like, couldn't. This, that's this why he couldn't the, do Jabba the Hutt. He couldn't make a Jabba the Hutt's mind. You know, he couldn't. Or, he can't. But he can move physical objects. Still, he could take. He can pull the lightsaber towards him to grab. He can. Oh, it doesn't matter how. You know, oh, how, he could loosen an air vent. Yeah, you know, well, yeah. that's, that's I, I will, point. He could move other objects. You know, that's, guys, I will say there's this, no though. other objects no, in no, the room. No, but Graham brings up a really guys. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, though, guys. guys yeah, it's yeah, uh, yeah. now understand no, I'm, I'm, understand I'm that it. in Return of the Jedi, Luke is one of how many? It's not like he's of thousands of Jedi's. There's like only a couple. Okay, <laughs> and so to say that he's right, the best Jedi know. out there, he may not be. It's it's like he's like the only plumber. You know, he may not be the best plumber out there, but he's the only one. You know, and so it's like <laughs> I Jedi, see. Yeah. Jedi he's like a twenty four hour plumber. It's three <laughs> in the morning. No, no, no. no. I, I, I no, no. I see he's his not point. Mike and you guys, so, you guys are saying, hey, he can move all this stuff. You know, in Jedi, it's like he could move some stuff, but he wasn't. He wasn't so. I don't think his command of the Force was as great as what you guys are thinking it. Now, it would be. True. Now, now Mifuni is, e- even though he may not be the greatest samurai swordsman, he's pretty darn yeah, good. He's yeah. in the top and seven. And if you're saying, <laughs> he's, you're, yeah, he's good. You're, and, you're throwing this thing at me like you're saying, but, and they got to fight with samurai swords. And Luke is probably going, oh, shit, it's this piece of metal, not my energy wand. So so he might have a little issue. I'm leaning towards Larry's view here because I think that whereas with Jedi, even at by the end of Jedi, Luke is still just uh, this cauldron of emotions. It's mm-hmm. all over the place. Right, mm-hmm. right. I still don't think he's really... A Jedi Found master. Yeah. Jedi he's, not, he's, master. Not, he he's not there yet. He hasn't reached his Zen place yet. Right. And he's no. too Whereas pre- I feel like Toshiro Mifune in Seven Samurai, by the end of that movie especially, Absolutely. He, he, he has calmed himself. Right. The, the, the reason why I chose this is multiple reasons. Um, to annoy us. Not the least of <laughs> which. Challenge us, Larry. <laughs> not the least of which is I've studied Samurai Sword and uh, so I've read about the principles of it and also uh, that's what George Lucas was doing. Like, you know, Yoda's Buddha. Sure. Right. Right. All yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortress, sure. Yeah, yeah, Lucas. Yeah. So to me, it's two different generations of samurai from two different parts of the galaxy and how would yeah. they handle it? And to yeah. me, what part of what the samurai is, it's their mental capacity. Yes. It's their holding of their emotions despite chaos all around them. Also, samurai were totally okay with dying. They didn't have a death wish, but they were like, that's why like uh, seppuku, you know what I mean? Sure. Is about dying with honor. With honor, right. Mm-hmm. Dying an honorable death. So Luke, now- He's more evolved than we've ever seen him in Jedi, but is he a full Jedi? No. Does he have full emotions no. yet? He's all over the map when yeah. it comes to emotions. Yeah. Mufune, I think, is like, those guys know they're going to die at the end of Sam- Seven Samurai. Yeah. Like, they know it's over, and they're still fighting with honor. Mm-hmm. Luke is always trying to save the galaxy and save his friends in very noble pursuits, but he's not sitting there going, oh, today I'm going to die, and I'm going to die with honor. No, I think and I'm going to die yeah. for the right reasons. I think the only point where Luke has got to that point maybe is we have a hint of that at the end of Force Awakens. Oh yeah, that's well, that, that's well, like, now, yeah, we're that's, yeah. now we're talking about yeah, that's, like yeah. that's like Mufume that's like that's like to share Mufune Luke right there. Right. right. Yeah. You know? at, in the beginning of Seven Samurai, to share Mufune is a clown. He has noble aspirations. Right. Clown. <laughs> he's kind of a, no, he's, no, he's, he's kind yeah, of, yeah. you know, yeah. he's just going to unfocus object of ridicule yeah. mm-hmm. and he is not disciplined, but he finally, especially through the influence of all of his friends and laying down his life for this common cause that's greater than himself, that actually has no material reward at None. all speaks to something that's deeper in him. It's Obi-Wan in A New Hope when he chooses to die because he knows that'll make Luke and the Force stronger right. when he lets Darth Vader yeah. kill him. Right, right. I- I'm with uh, I'm with uh, Deshira Mufuni. Yeah, me too. You know what? I I think I'm going to go with you as well. Wow. Oh, hey. Sean? You know, I, it's kind of close, but I think Mufuni. Wow. wow. Look what you did. Wow. Look what you did. You know? I, put, I put that one out there and the McGarrett Kirk went out there because I really wanted I wanted to hear the debate the discussion on it because they're so evenly matched again in my own like I love these two characters right. so right. much right, right. that it's like what would it be that's why I like talking yeah. about it but I really do think that Mifuni it's it's the more fulfilling growth he's, story he, yeah he's the more mature in a way both yeah. spiritually and mentally I would propose this since we all agree that Mifuni would win he would have Luke, blade to his neck, 
and then say, we're done. Absolutely. Wouldn't oh, yeah. kill him. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. say, you need to learn from this. And then right. they would, and they would kind of, and kind of. he would be master, you know. Like, yes. Yeah. 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 And Very then cool. Luke would say, come teach, teach me or something. Yeah. yeah. And, and then he'd go, by the way, I know telekinesis. <laughs> before you go oh cool hey. well, let's, uh, I think we got a deal here yeah. alright so that, that's a neat one That that's a pretty neat one that's cool. have you All tried right. sake <laughs> pretty damn good alright so that was wonderful that was really good I like that yeah, one yeah, I, guess yeah, yeah. It, I guess it goes back to me now goes, right yeah, okay All right, let, let, me, let me try kind of an extra let me try response. no 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 I, I don't no, think no, I did no. but but let me oh oh wait we're, did I we're no. all deviating it's no, fine no no I don't want to I don't want to go ahead have you gone I've gone yeah you go ahead go ahead go ahead okay well, it kind of in the you know you threw out an interesting little dragon one, Sean. Okay, but I okay. I want to I I want to give it a little more, a little, little, little bit more. Yeah, okay, well, well, listen, I want to make a little more, girly one, yeah, the little cute. Okay, uh, okay, the so two dogs. Okay, yeah, yeah. Versus... I want to make. I'm I'm going to give these dragons some balls. Okay, I'm going to put two big dragons. Okay, okay. My, imagine, little, my little pony. Yes. Against, okay, 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 no, okay. imagine, imagine. Okay, who would win? Two creatures enter, one creature leaves. Imagine Smog from. The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog from 2013, directed by Peter Jackson. That great, great, dragon. amazing dragon. Right, the intelligent right. dragon. A right. voice was speak, uh, uh, Benedict, Benedict uh, Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. Right, right. Great, great dragon. Versus Dragonheart, the, the dragon Draco with the voice by Sean Connery. Sean Connery and right? here you have another intelligent dragon. And so you have these two dragons battling it. They can both be fire. They can both fly. What would you guys think? I gotta go, Connery. I mean, I just that his dragon. I, I think to me, and it's it's the voice is what tells me who that character, that dragon is, and the power of that dragon. And the again, we talked about this earlier. Fire. Yeah. The I think the power of the fire is what separates one dragon from another. And mm -hmm. I think the the voice of Connery gives you this deep strength, this old. Wisdom, wisdom. Yeah. I think that it's it's funny. Yet you should bring that up because uh, my first feeling was, oh, it's definitely small. But if, if it's size for size, if the dragons are the same size, they can both fly. They can both be fire. The funny thing is, Draco he he makes a deal with the knight. He's more of a wheeling dealing guy. Mm -hmm. I think, and whereas Smog is more just kind of what we've talked about about like brute strength, kind but of smog, anger, right? But hasn't Smog been around for? Ages also sleeping, in, sleeping. See, that's in, my, in the, that's my thing. My sleeping thing is that in the gold. All he does is just lie around. <laughs> yeah, and, and, treasure, and right? yeah, that's right, Matt. That's right. No, he's well, done some destruction, yeah. but well, it doesn't take long. On. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, getting, he's been living inside, you know, inside right, the mountain right. with, with all the gold, Isn't and he is a ferocious dragon. But if these two had to battle it out, I'm thinking Smog would be so angry. At Draco, and they'd be flying around, and I think Draco would be able to do things. Draco would outwit him. Yeah, yeah. That's also, isn't Smog physically bigger though? Sma but well, I'm just, I'm just saying. Smog size would if, be if, asleep if, from lying around all that time. Yeah, so it would be. <laughs> he'd be getting over the pins and needles <laughs> thing. Yeah. Wing, one of his wings would be asleep. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> well, I, I don't know if it, I mean you know you get the blood's hot, got to pump you know and stuff when he you know I think how when many yeah. long there. range fire like how much his aim's going to be off? He's been in that cave. Yeah, that he's not. He's rusty. Yeah. He's rusty. Okay. Yeah, I guess I could see that. I James, what do you think? Well, I, I honestly have not seen either movie. <laughs> so, wow. But I will ask you this. I will <laughs> no, ask drag you this. <laughs> okay. Puffin I stuff. Puff and stuff. Puff and stuff was. <laughs> but how, about, how about this is a question, though. Does either dragon have more brute force and ferocity? Because wasn't the dra Draco dragon a little bit more benign? Uh, Isn't Smog, which is more monstrous villain? Well, I would say uh, he's more uh, benevolent. He's, it seems like he's wiser. Mm -hmm. He doesn't let he, he doesn't let the small things bug him. Maybe kind of a he's thing. More intelligent, maybe. but he moves. I mean, just the fact that he's out and around. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. out he's and around. Yeah, you know, he's, yeah, yeah. I think he's traveled more. Yeah, you know, he's I, more worldly. Well, yeah, he's a more worldly dragon. Benedict Cumberbatch and Connery. You got to go with Connery, no matter what, right? Oh, <laughs> there is that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there is that. But. but Cumberbatch is great. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Nothing great. Yeah. Yeah. And it's strange, so amazing. You know? yeah. I mean, yeah. they're both great, yeah. but doesn't he, he loses to a Hobbit? <laughs> no, yeah, he doesn't lose to the Hobbit. Hobbit. It's it's actually well, an archer, well, but but uh, well, they outsmart him. And, and, and there's, a little, there's a little. He gets tricked in his own house. Yeah, yeah. how yeah. smart can he be? There's a little. There's a little piece of skin that's removed, and so there's a little bare patch, and so when the arrows 
thrown and and Why so. Why does he have a bear patch? Well, it's funny because because uh, Draco d- tore it off. No, no, no. <laughs> well, it's funny that brings up another thing. But okay, I just wanted to throw out the dragon thing. Okay, yeah, so that's we're a, all that's a good one. Okay, that's a good. One. Good, yeah. good. I like that one. Better like than Pumpkinhead and uh, Wampa. Okay, no, good. All right, you're, you're back in the ring. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. okay, all right. I got one. Now, that's Sean, blow your fucking socks off. Oh, oh. wow! Bold, wow. bold, bold. It's, right. it's, wow. it's a crazy one. Oh, here we go. Ready? okay. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. Don't scare me. The Tingler. Oh, 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 oh! I love the Tingler. Versus a Zanti Misfit. <gasps> oh. oh, that's okay. good. You know these two? Interesting. Grams? No. Can I ask a question? <laughs> what are you talking about? Sean, Sean, okay. Sean, I got one question. I have one question. Tingler. Now, okay. Oh, wait. I, that's Is that from Wrath of Khan? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to explain this to you. They put Sean, creatures, Sean, they can, I ask, bodies. can I have a, yes, I have a question about Zanti Misfit? Question. Okay. Yes. Is it the criminal Zanti Misfit or it's, yes. is it okay? Criminal. Okay, okay. criminal. Criminals. Okay, because so, I have I have my opinion of this, but I okay. want to hear what you guys I, think. You, I think you should probably explain what these things are. Yes. Too. Okay. Well, the tingler, tingler. The tingler is this creature that is in all of us oh. that forms on our spine when we get scared. When, when the idea that your spine stiffens when you're frightened, and it's I'm it, showing it, Graham it, a it manifests actual itself. Tingler. He's holding it, <laughs> and that is on your spine at all times, but it's small. But, but the when reason you get scared, the reason you ever see it right is because it it's grows. Sc- but screams and when these two person two little tentacles down. on the front of its head like wrap around like, like the pincers. edge of your neck. But when when, when you scream to release your fear, and you the scream, tingler dissolves away, it becomes small again. So the only okay. way to the only way to capture a live tingler in captivity is to find a mute person, <laughs> and, <laughs> and this happens and in the movie. Have so you frighten to Vincent death. Price you frighten to death out of a, a mute death. person. Deaf and then mute you can woman. cut out the the st- tingler from her back. And it's it a great loose. movie, yeah. right? It's it's and they have to fun it and ridiculous, and it's so, that, so that's the tingler. And the Zanti misfits are alien creatures from the planet Zanti. Yeah, mm-hmm. and course, they the are odds. little. They are like little <laughs> about like they're like they're large like, ant large creatures, like, yeah, like creatures ant that have like creepy, freaky uh, human little faces. faces. That face head. This is from the Outer Limits TV series. Outer Limits TV series. Right, and and great episode. The Zanti misfits in the in the show in the episode are the, they're the misfits are the criminals they're the bad Zantis oh, okay. that the we planet allow has sent them to us. on our planet yes. to avoid war with the Zantis so, so we allowed them to have their criminals in this little reservation area so we've right. sort of become Australia yes yes, <laughs> yes. Exactly. Exactly. That's right exactly right exactly but now yes. a Tingler and a Zanti are, are pretty much the same size yeah and the Zantis the one thing about the Zantis is the Zantis kind of at the end of the episode they kind of attack. A bunch of people. Yeah. But now I always wonder by so they have the bodies of these kind of oversized ants and yeah. these and the faces of like kind of human like faces yeah. and like with like little kind of human like teeth. Yeah. But when they when, when they are attacking people, what are they doing? Are they biting them? Do they have poison in them? Like right. Like you see people being like overrun by them and they're being attacked. But how are the Xantes other than like biting them and like making you know injuring them? How how do they kill? Whereas the Tingler has these nasty fucking pincers that can wrap around your throat and choke you. So the Who Tingler, so I'm going to venture out here and say that it's got to be the Tingler. If the Tingler ever gets its hands or pincers right. on a Zanti misfit, it's like steel. Right. They, they, they like and the minute it grapple. gets its you know, little feet on you, and grabs you, it's done. It's over. I agree. And I would say only if like the Xantis have some kind of like poisonous bite. So if they bite through the hide of, of the Tingler, maybe in, incapacitate it or dies from poison. Other than that, I have to go with the Tingler too. Like the Xantis could crawl all around. They might be able to like outrun it a little bit. Right. But in a, in a physical close fight, I think the Tingler is going to... Sean, is it just one one Zanti Misfit? Yeah, I'd say one Zanti Misfit against yeah. And we don't yeah. even know really what keeps the Tingler alive. Like, no. what does it feed on well, except for fear? So, so we're assuming that a Tingler out, on its own outside of a body can survive. We're going yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, unless... Yes, if it's removed properly. It does. But it if moves you, around but if and you scream, it will attack. But if you the scream. thing is, though, the Xantis have that high-pitched whale. But it's not whale. the same. But it's not a human scream. Sean, 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 Sean. It's not a human scream. That's true. So we even know. if it did, yeah. we don't know. We don't, we don't know because a human know. scream incapacitates uh, Tingler, but we don't know what a Xanti scream would do. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm just saying that I think they are so alien that even their high pitched whine would right. not equal a human scream. That is okay. my interpretation of this. And okay. I think so. I they think wouldn't scream until they were being, in the death grip yeah. of the Tingler. Right, and and right. also the thing about those little Xanti misfits, they are not a human with the neck, with the muscles, and the and no, the cartilage. It's like a little head, more and fragile. So which is. 
yes, Matt. Right. So I'm. I, I don't know if I'm. You know, you and I are agreeing here, but I would say that the Tingler would win because I think it would crush the Zanti Misfit once it got its neck. I think it's this yeah, is done, thinking right. human, whereas Zanti Misfit isn't. So I think right. that the Zanti Misfit would lose. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's, Ooh. it's the Tingler, Graham. I gotta go Tingler too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey Tingler. Unless the scream, the only yeah. thing, the only asterisk I'd put by that is the scream. If the scream had right, an effect right. on the tingler, we'll just have to wait till it happens in real life. All right, we'll, we'll see find it. out. Yeah. Let me know. Yeah. Yeah. Put it on we'll YouTube. We'll run an experiment. All right, that good one, Sean. I like that, that one. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, here's one that I just I have a couple others that I, I think are interesting, but I want to bring this up just because I just saw this movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, uh, the latest Godzilla movie, Shin Godzilla or Godzilla Resurgence, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, recently premiered in Japan and in America. Yeah. And I just recently watched it thanks to the gods of Torrent. <laughs> and, uh, and I loved it. I, I yeah, really, I'm with you, man. really loved it. I, and I saw it in a theater and it was just, I, now I, the, I, it's not I'm, what I expected. I'm a little bit more on the fence, but I, I was fascinated. Now, this it. is a Godzilla who, I don't know, Graham, have you seen it? Which, the Shin Godzilla? The, the, the Shin Godzilla. No, I have not seen it. When you watch this film... The closest thing you can really compare it to is the very first Godzilla movie. <gasps> because there's a very grim, realistic tone that the first one has that none of the other ones have. I Agreed. mean, maybe maybe Godzilla Raids is a, a little closer. Yeah, yeah. But the first one is very serious. Agreed. And this one is also very serious. And the Godzilla in this film is, first of all, it's there's so many things about this film that kind of hit other movie themes. Like, there's a little bit of alien in it. Because this Godzilla has different forms. It starts off as this weird, almost like fish-like amphibian that crawls up onto land. But then on land, it's able to mutate quickly into the more familiar Godzilla shape. Mm -hmm. But the way this thing looks, it's not your typical Godzilla. It's like sinewy flesh. You can see the, uh, the atomic power that keeps this thing alive. You can see it pulsing under the skin. And its face is just this mass of uneven It's like uneven gross teeth. almost. Yeah. It's really, it's like a, it's very muscly. Yeah. It's like Freddy Krueger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very pulpy and really uh, and a very unusual design for Godzilla. And as the movie goes along, first of all, the movie is great because... It's one of the few movies I've ever seen where there's not really a main character. No. There's a bunch of characters, and, and you, you're getting the reaction to Godzilla throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. All the different governmental bureaucracies competing against each other, and, it's a, and that's done in kind of a satirical way. But you also get the idea of this is really as close as you can get in a Godzilla movie of how a real government exactly. would react. Really that's really that's, that's what I loved. Monster. That's what I loved about it, uh, Matt. And I, and the funny thing is, some people have criticized that. Oh, there's not enough Godzilla. If you really watch it and just take it all in, it's like how would a city really react? And there's all these things about red tape. It's like, um, hey, we want to throw a bomb at that thing. Well, wait a minute. We have to check. Do that. Wait, 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 wait. We have to check with the the, the yeah. people who run the docks. Oh, but we have to check yeah. with the the, the yeah. biology right. people. Yeah, dealing with and everybody. Old, and then, and one of my favorite scenes. Is, well, how are we going to evacuate uh, everyone? I, it's and, like, how do we get? And and that my one of my favorite moments is there. There's a scene where, back in the older Godzilla movies that we love and cherish, it, it's like. You know, the commander general says, fire at will. You know, and everyone shoots their tanks. <laughs> Not in this movie. It's like, I have a clear shot. Do I have permission to fire? And it goes through a chain. <laughs> and it gets through to the prime minister. And it, but, but, it's like, but it's like, it's like one, two, three. Right. And, it's like, and, then, and then finally the prime minister says, okay, go ahead. And then it goes back to this woman. Yes, you can. To another commander. Oh, yes, wait. And there's like, wait, wait, wait. Some there's, civilians. there's people on the bridge. What and are you going to do? And then, and, then, and then when they hear this, the prime minister says, do not shoot. And then someone says, prime minister, no, no, no. We have you a perfect need, shot. Need, it's, now and there's like, no, 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 sir. We have to shoot now. We have to shoot now. And there's this great tug of war. Very and it's like, human, you don't, yes, it's real. human. And all and it, of that becomes the main concern of the film, not the giant monster. And, but, but, and I, I have to say, but you it's, see, that's, it's, it's one of the few Godzilla films of all Godzilla films, it's the most I've ever been engaged in the human side. Yes, of Matt, I would agree oh, with you. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know what's usually, funny? Usually they're just kind of fodder. Yeah, that. yeah. and right, I, I don't yeah. know if I'm waiting I, for the Godzilla I, stuff. I don't right. know if we had talked about this before, but uh, but uh, when it came out, you know, it wasn't a wide release; it was a limited release. Yes, right. believe it or not, guys, I took my 11 year old daughter and I said, "Look, you know, I, I, I told my daughter, I said, look, I.'" 
I don't know how good this film is going to be, and it's got subtitles. Is that cool with you? I can read some. She goes, no, Dad, that's fine. We sat, we watched it. I was captivated, and she was blown away. She had never seen anything really? like cool. it. At the end of the movie, yeah. she, I said, so, honey, what would you think? She goes, Daddy, I really liked it. That was, that was cool. wild. Yeah. And so even my daughter got a lot out of it, but I know some people want a constant battle of giant monster destruction, right, right. and this movie was more than that. So I would say to people, go and see this yeah. movie. It's a great, I, re- I really enjoyed it, but one of the things we're talking about who would win. Oh, yeah. I'm yes. sorry, man. I no, no. Stop, that, sorry. This is a long, roundabout way yeah. of promoting the film, but also saying that like this Godzilla is, talk about formidable. Oh. I mean, it's almost like the thing formidable. Yeah. Because this thing just keeps getting bigger and stronger. It's huge. It's probably the biggest Godzilla, the biggest right? Scale. Yeah. It's yeah. the biggest mm-hmm. scale Godzilla. And nothing they do, they fire at it. Missiles, machine guns, and nothing even touches it. And they don't know what to do. They finally, it takes humankind and science to come up with an idea to how to at least incapacitate it. Like even then, even when they think that they've got this thing beat, they don't really know for sure. It's under control. It's under control. Not necessarily beat. And they also get the intel that this thing is about to procreate. Oh. And so then there's that. Yeah, And, and, and to me, Matt, I think the thing that blew me away was just the amount of Destruction. destruction. Now, now we. One of my favorite films is GMK, and there's a lot of destruction there. But here, this creature does something that totally blew me away. Everyone knows he has this atomic breath, but this is so fierce, and it, it's like almost like a laser. But then he does this thing where lasers emit from the outside of his back, and it cuts buildings in half. And there's a shot of the monsters in the center of the uh, the city, and citywide, the whole well, place is engulfed in flames. Slicing and I, skyscrapers and just Matt, right in half. We have never seen this kind of destruction, and that's a, that's another beautiful thing about the film is that there's so many things in this film that you've never seen in a Godzilla movie. Yeah, I love and that, it. Yeah, yeah, and that's what you want. You want uh, like if you're gonna do a new Godzilla, we've seen every possible permutation. Give me something different. Right. And what you get, talk about different, is this is one that if it weren't for mankind, I don't know how you would beat this thing. No. I don't know. I certainly don't know how another monster no. would beat it. And so my thing is that like, is there any other version of Godzilla that could beat that Godzilla? Well, I will throw this out at you, oh. Matt. I it's funny because this is the largest one I I was thinking about this. What kind of other creature could battle it? Uh, Godzilla? It's like, well, if you're going to do like King Kong versus... This is such a terrifying, horrific, powerful creature. The only thing I could think of is... It doesn't kinda, seem no, that no, no, intelligent. It goes, no, no. It goes back to your Ant-Man thing. Okay. It would have to be some kind of a disease, a virus, something small that okay. gets in. This is how I interpret it. Okay. That it's something that's small. It's not something that's the same size that has a battle, whether it's a robot or a giant monster. To me, it's something inside. It would be something biological. That's but, okay, what I... Let, let me... As a Godzilla fan, let me throw this one out okay. at you because cause what I was thinking is like, forget about the... If Let's say that the older, sillier Godzilla was the same size. Okay. <laughs> right. But that, that Godzilla, this one seems to be almost like it has all these powers, and they talk. They hint at its intellect, but you never really get a sense of that. It just seems no. like something that's just trying it's to existing. survive. It's existing. Yeah. It's moving. Yes, and it's anything that uh, that is in its way. It just kind of uh, anything. To, just it just yeah. It, it has. Reacts. It, it even has radar. Like yeah, it can tell when planes are close, and that's when it shoots out its lasers out of the back. But Matt, wouldn't you agree? You've never seen a, that that whole laser effect when it got so and, formidable. And and the thing is, I mean, when it takes that breath, where it inhales, and you can see. The, the atomic energy inside yeah. of it and then when it's emitted out of its mouth Godzilla in the past would just kind of open his jaws right. this one it's almost snake like in the sense that it the jaws kind of expand mm. sideways almost now one thing I would say is yeah. that this particular Godzilla one of the things that it does it expends so much energy when it does all this laser stuff is that it has to rest it does yes <laughs> and I've yes. never seen a previous Godzilla no. have to rest mm-hmm. so I would say that maybe that let's say like the last American Godzilla yeah. mm-hmm. which was pretty damn powerful yes. yeah. that it could almost like what the humans do is like kind of wait him out yeah. and wait till he wears himself out wait, and what about do something what about Meltdown Godzilla from Godzilla vs. the Destroyer where it, it's about to go nuclear Yeah, the only you know, thing with mm. that is that if, it, if that Godzilla goes nuclear then that would be the thing it might that, feed it but it, it might feed it or it also might blow it to pieces and then it's progeny yeah, go oh, all over. Very, very, right. very yeah, uh, blob-like. Guys. So, yeah. Yeah. for so Matt, Matt, so for the sake of this discussion here, who would win? 
if you say Shin Godzilla, you're saying you're not sure who the other opponent would be. I kind of want to get your opinion, like because I, I don't okay. know. How, as I, you've explained, having not seen it, but as you've explained it, I don't know. Unless this King Kong from the new King Kong movie has no. some kind of powers no. that we don't know yet, no, because the movie hasn't come out. But I don't know what else could defeat this thing. I would, I would go small. I would say it would have to be something microscopic. Whether it be, oh, oh, like for example, like something from Andromeda Strain. Okay, or, that's or the thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's wow. true. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, with the thing, because the thing could infect Godzilla and then. Become it. Well, I, I my fear of that is it wouldn't even defeat it. It would just they would hi- hybrid into some right. super yeah. mutant thing that could never be Nothing stopped. But that would be win that. win for the thing. But see, sure. see no, yeah, Gr- that's true. Yeah. Grammy's that's true. a really good point because what we don't know, Matt. I mean, we we don't know. We understand that the thing is an intelligent, evolving, constantly moving creature. But what we don't know is the effect of that type of radiation, that Godzilla type radiation, and how it would mutate. How it the, how it, uh, the mutate thing. the thing. I think it's an interesting concept. I still go back to something that it would have to be microscopic, biological, no, something small. Obviously, That's a, like I don't think the Andromeda strain is a good example yeah, of something yeah. that would. Yeah, it's a disease. It would, it would dry out all its blood, right? Like you know. But I, I do. I still think that the thing is able to adapt to so many different forms. We know that it adapts to human forms because that's what's on this planet. Right. But what if it lands on a different planet where it's a different type of physiology? Yeah, I, I think well, it travels but, in space. It probably yeah. has done that to other planets and other all completely different life forms. Right. Although, although, I mean, we do know, I mean, you can destroy the thing by fire. So if the thing were, you know, crawling away, oh, that's you know, and Godzilla were to... And Atomic. It, look, it, it, that it's might like, be fire, and it, and yeah. it's not, And it's not like a focused beam. It is a giant, you know, huge, right. like almost immense force of fire and atomic breath that could eliminate an entire area but it, but maybe it's maybe it's vulnerable to fire because we're vulnerable to fire if it then linked itself to Godzilla's physiology that atomic furnace Godzilla right, right. it would then take on the properties of that creature and then it wouldn't be vulnerable to fire take anymore. over the world yeah mm-hmm. that's Heavy Something. stuff. Well, that is re- that is you really thought heavy. You were worried about you know, 2017. <laughs> yeah, you know, Matt. The, the one th- shit is about to hit the fan. The one thing I can take out of this is is to our listeners: if you haven't had a chance to see Shin Godzilla, you know, I think you should check it no, out. No, it's, it's it, and, it and, shocked and, me and, how good it was. And, and look, I, I understand there are a lot of people that are going to say, "Oh, I wanted constant action." This is not that movie. It but, has. It, it, there's a couple. There's some bumpy moments, but but it's, for all that it succeeds in, yeah. it's. Definitely, no, uh, honestly, strong thumbs up. It's not because I wanted more action or more monster action that I'm on the fence. I really, honestly, didn't quite get. I mean, I understood sort of the satire and I understood the political points. I didn't really completely get it. And I have to see it again. And maybe this is why a couple of friends from Japan that we talked to who saw it in Japan said that they liked it, but they had to see it a few times, or, or they weren't sure about it, and they had to see it a few times. I still have to see this, so I'm, and, I'm, and now I'm really anxious. But, to. but but I understand that, because I have to see it again, and I'll probably like it on repeated viewings, but the, from the first viewing, I'm like, oh, the jury's still out for me. Not for me. I mean, mm-hmm. right, right at the end, I, I like Matt said, I had never seen anything like this. It totally blew me away. I, it surprised me, and there was stuff that happened that I'd always wanted to know, like, if this were to really happen, what would how would the town or how would the city right. really react? Yeah. And this is the closest yeah. thing to I like that. the fact that there's something that's different ever like done. That. Yeah. yeah, that that's ever been done. Which I'm just great. excited by the fact that it's a different aspect of this telling of this story right. than we've ever heard. Just from all what these you've movies, got, yes. Yes. Yeah. because yeah. like that's there's the, still stuff to mine. You know, the last the American idea. one, uh, last Ugh. couple American ones were just like, gee, come on, well, man. I didn't mind the last American one. No, I mean, I mean it, it wasn't the Godzilla great. parts. Great. Godzilla everything, else everything else, everything else, rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, no, the last it wasn't one we didn't rubbish. see. We didn't see Godzilla no. until an hour and fifteen minutes into the goddamn movie. All the human characters were like, no, I liked it. I liked it. Well, there's also you know he's sort of the. Brian Cranston's hair. <laughs> Come on, it was like oh that god, did, that was, didn't bother. How, I how, I didn't give a shit about any of those characters. No, I, well, yeah, one of the cool things about this is that the '54 Godzilla was kind of in the aftermath of the the atomic bomb in Japan, and this is sort of like the aftermath of the tsunami and oh, okay. Fukushima. That too, yeah, yeah. So it's cool. Yeah, I mean, really find this thing and watch it because I mean, it really really surprised me at how great it was. Yeah, I'm pretty, excited. It'll, yeah. Cool. it'll be on like Netflix yeah. soon, I'm sure. James? Okay. How about this? Who would win? Rosemary's Baby <laughs> okay. versus 
the it's alive baby. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, again, uh, I'm going to slam dunk I you, know. Ben. Yeah, go, yeah. Okay. Rosemary's baby is the Antichrist. Okay. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, okay. wait a minute. Wait okay. a minute. Wait, 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 Human baby or did form. you just say that Rosemary's baby would beat the It's Alive babies? Yes. I got to disagree. Matt, I got to disagree. Are you supernatural powers? Uh, Dude, you know what, it's, we, we it's a know, fucking baby. But Satan will not let that baby be killed. No, it has but nothing baby, to do with the Satan. Baby has it's to the grow baby. up and find out. Yes, find out of its it has powers. to learn it's still that it's a human evil. baby. Okay, that it's a live that, baby. That, would it's alive. Would slice it, it up yes. in two seconds. It yes, would, it, it wouldn't happen because there'd be a supernatural thing that would happen that would stop the baby from attacking. No, 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 no. In the omen, yes. In Rosemary's baby, well, no. we don't know. No, 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 we don't know because in Rosemary's baby, the whole Rosemary's pregnancy and the birth of that baby have to be carried through by the care of the coven of witches, uh-huh. and they're all very, very deliberate about the conspiracy. And from that, we can be led to believe that that baby is pretty vulnerable. I even think though exactly. I think Agreed. that baby has to grow up before and then it's t- taught and can't even grow into well. his power. It's it's like like Damien when as yeah. he grows he realizes he can control his power. Same thing I think that baby is very human like. You're right. The Covenant of Witches have to protect that baby have to. at all costs. Whereas the It's Alive baby is just pure it's feral. It's a pure animal feral. Okay, so yeah. what, so what, what you're saying, saying is when that baby is born, you're saying when Rosemary's baby is born, it has Cognitive thought. He goes, "Hey, I'm no, the devil, no, no, baby. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the devil something around is hanging happen. around. But the going. devil can't interfere. This is between no. the Rosemary's baby yeah. and how who says the devil? The, okay, it's uh, between those two I, creatures. I, I am <laughs> two babies going, enter, am, one baby <laughs> leaves. Okay, I'm, already, I'm now, I'm now leaning towards your way of thinking. Yes, okay. because yes. because I do. I understand what you're saying now. But yeah, it's I, not so cut and dry now, is it, sir? No, no, no. Hey, I'm. I'm conceding. Graham, here. Graham, any thoughts on this? You know, I, I, I must admit, I took a similar track of Matt in that when I first heard it, I was like, oh, Rosemary's baby. For sure, the same thing. Like, it's the devil's baby. But when you go into the, the, the minutia of it, I, I agree with you. I think that yes. Rosemary's baby would lose. Yes. Oh. Yes, it would. Because it's, it's, it doesn't it have its full powers. We're yet. not right, saying right. Rosemary's toddler, it's Rosemary's baby. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Rosemary's well, toddler is a full fledged or, or devil getting, or getting demon. There. You're yeah, getting or there. Whatever. Yeah. But then it would have to go against the It's Alive toddler. Ah. Right. <laughs> How about Rosemary's Baby and Look Who's Talking? <laughs> Probably look well, who's talking. like what, what stage and Look well, Who's Talking Baby? Well, like the Rosemary's Rosemary's baby. We're, we're talking Look Who's Talking 2. We're we'll talking to a, death. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> I right, actually uh, had a Nits Alive one. Just a, okay, really, okay. Little, oh, no, throw it out. Little throw it tiny, out. you you know. Go ahead. Uh, a little zigzag here, and that is, I had It's Alive Baby versus Belial. Oh yeah, Baskin Case. Baskin Case. That's you know, Baskin oh, 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 yeah. oh. Yeah. oh I like well, that. I would. That's closer. I think. That's, that's a closer, closer one because they're yeah. both vicious. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 And they're both kind of in baby form. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Belial was Belial. I think has more intelligence. But, he has more intelligence. But I don't think. He, but but physically, he has the same kind of capacity as as, the baby. as a baby. I still yeah, think and his the... mind is is kind of atrophied too, right? Yeah. So he's always and kind he really, of like yeah. And really, I mean, he he went. But he he has the teeth, but he doesn't no, have he the does. claws he the doesn't. way the baby does. No. And I think the baby might yeah. still win because it's more agile. My view when I was thinking of this was it's got to be the it's live baby again. Because there's nothing more vicious than a baby, right? <laughs> right. I mean, I put now as it's, it's, it's alive as uh, it's alive. Baby is so strong. I put it's alive, <laughs> yeah, baby against Shin Godzilla. <laughs> so oh, I would do. Oh. Who would win? Oh, you speak wisdom, <laughs> Graham Elwood. Oh my God, I think that's right. Yeah. Oh. Man. That the one thing that it wasn't expecting, right? <laughs> Fucking machine guns and missiles, yeah. and then here comes a baby, yeah, like in right in the Achilles tendon, boom, boom. down, wow. down goes Godzilla. <laughs> nice. Graham, do you have another one? Uh, yes, I have Beretta again. <laughs> uh, Beretta versus Mannix, go. Villain versus wife. <laughs> Banachek versus. <laughs> Banachek, <laughs> um, uh, Kolchak versus uh, Bill Bixby. No, um, here, here's what I came up with: the car from Christine. <gasps> ooh, 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 I like it already. Ooh, yes, it's a, ooh, ooh. Versus the monster from Terror at Thirty Thousand Feet, John Lithgow version of the Twilight Zone movie. Mm. 
the monster that's out of the wing. There was the Shatner one from the Twilight Zone yeah, TV right, show. The gremlin, right. Demon right. Gremlin. The gremlin. Thing. But from the movie, there was an even crazier looking one. Right. John Lithgow yes. basically had yeah, the yeah, Shatner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an odd so, pairing. Yeah, it well, is an odd pairing. Is it? Pair. Yes. Oh, wait, because wait, wait, the, yes. the, the, the oh, monster yeah. can eat machines at 30,000 feet. Oh. That's true. That's why I put them together because oh. interesting. I, thought, I, thought, I thought you were going to say Christine versus the truck from Duel. That's what I thought you were going to say. I thought the exact same <laughs> no, thing. No, no, but this, no. Okay. I, I, I get it, I Graham. Get it. Okay. I get your okay. I get it. I first thought this was stupid, but now I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking, I trick you know, all of you. Yes, no, you, you know. No. No. I have a Trojan I'm, horse I'm of stupid. I'm sad that you're underestimating him. No, at this I'm, point I'm, in the game <laughs> where he's proven himself time and time again. Well, what do you need from me now? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Okay, that's, 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 Okay, name. okay, okay. So, so it tear, he, yeah, tears now, apart machines. It can now, tear here, apart the okay, machine, okay. and here's a possessed demonic machine. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, but, 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 that car, it could smash into something, pull back, and the, it'll go. Yeah, it has rejuvenated. It has rejuvenated. It can rejuvenate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, it can listen, rejuvenate itself. I grant you that the creature, the, 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 the gremlin. Gremlin, gremlin, could actually start biting or ripping it apart, but. Christine would just have to like go into a wall, crush the gremlin, pull back, and. But we don't know about the gremlin survivability in the sense that look, it can survive at thirty thousand feet in without the oxygen in, exactly. in the sky. Yeah, in yes, 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 but it's, so it's, it's not it's, just like it, some it, okay, some tiger or listen, something. No, now I get that. Yes. Graham, it can leap. It it can fly or leap or something from point A to point B. Because how it got on that plane, it didn't travel with the plane. Okay, but it, you don't know if it's supernatural or not. And See, there's I, claw marks. Oh. I think it's supernatural. I, it has to be. Yeah. Yes. We yeah. don't know. Are it's you a, sure? It's a great. Yes. Well, we, well, well, had, it just appears, and then with the, the idea, idea, the, the the original idea of gremlins was that they were these creatures that came out of the sky that messed with, you know, they're monkey wrenched in planes, and st- right. so I think it's supernatural. Well, where, if where it's supernatural, from? obviously, then it's obviously the supernatural well, creature. Well, if, if, if we learn anything, if we learn anything, but wait, are you saying that? But Christine is also supernatural. Yes, exactly. So who would win? Who would win? Yeah, yeah. We're not saying that because now we got two almost okay. Entities depending right. on I will. Say, I don't pick slam dunks, guys. No, I no. If, I no, 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 if you, no, no, if you no. cut if you cut off the a gremlin's arm, how do we know that it might just grow it right back? It lives to destroy. See, but you're, ma- things. you're making right, shit right. up, Sean. Well, but we don't you're know making enough shit about up. it, though. Okay. Well, what we do know. Here's what we do know. Oh. Here's what we do know. Let's stay. In, let's stay. What we do know. Yes. It can survive at thirty thousand feet. Right. It doesn't need oxygen, or it has its own way of breathing. We don't know how, but it can survive where a human cannot. Right. It feeds on machines. Okay. It has claw. We saw the we saw it eat it. We see the claw marks at the end of that, that yes. scene in the yes. movie. Uh-huh. Right. right? It can fly. Yes. We yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. That it we know. Or, it flies or, way up in the stratosphere. Right? Yeah. You see it fly away. We those are facts. Those are facts. Okay. Right, right. So anything else, we don't know if it has regenerative properties. We don't know. But we can I can I at least uh, my supposition is that if you connect all those things, it does have supernatural powers. A thing that can do those things that we just listed that we know right. are fact, it must have supernatural okay, so powers. Okay, no, no, no. I'm well, we throw, can't add no, powers no, no, to no, that. No, okay, stuff. listen, I'm going to throw this out. Okay, Graham, Graham just brought, brought something up that, okay, here's the thing. We know how Christine kind of met its demise. Okay, it actually gets crushed and it gets put into a cube, and we know that it starts to move a little bit. However, if this creature, the gremlin, were able to pull out the engine, what it would it interpret as the heart or whatever. Uh-huh. I mean, if you separate the machinery from the actual machine, right. then essentially you've killed the machine. If, you're, if you take out motor and you're chewing on it and you eat it, it's like there's no more motor in the, in the car. Now you could say, well, well, if it's not there, if, if it's not there to... to a crumpled uh, fender yes. can be repaired. Right. Well, right. No, or right. a crumpled An fender... motor... Right. That, well, that, that's just it. If the crumpled fender is crumpled, it can move back in shape. But if you remove the fender completely... Right. If a, hum- and you ch- if a human it. being took apart Christine... Yeah. In a bunch of pieces, there's right, a very right. good chance that all those pieces might come back together again. Like, like, they like, would, like the Iron yeah. Giant, right? Yeah, yeah. But, oh, very good, yes, Sean. Yeah, very much so. However, but, but if you get a supernatural creature taking apart a supernatural being, I think eating it, eating it, yeah. eating it, eats it, right? right? Okay, yeah. it just eats it. it. So it eats it. 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 Stomach acid <laughs> dissolves it away. Graham, St- I, excess stomach acid. Special I, gremlins stomach acid. Now that you've explained this and we've thought about it, we've discussed it, I am going to lean towards the gremlin. 
Probably the only thing that could beat Christine. Mm, I would say. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Are we inspired a- by your Shin Godzilla. There you go. <laughs> hey. There you go. And that's why the truck from Duel, not even close. Because well, yeah, we don't, don't know, know what that know is. Enough about so that. It might be closer yeah. to Killdozer, which is a machine. Yes, Killdozer. With- Killdozer is, yeah. is an alien possessed. Uh, Bulldozer, though, right? It's well, but it's not sentient only, right? It can't it's fix itself only because like that's Christine. true. No, right? That's yeah. true. Yeah. Christine can fix itself. Right. That's a good one, man. Yeah. That's Thank a good you. one. I, I commend you. Mm-hmm. You yeah. doubt every single one of mine, and then at the end you, <laughs> you say how what? great they are. Listen, hey, you've you've proven your point. Okay, you're okay. not a clown. You you know you. I've, I'm saying you. Okay. These are very good. I'm very I'm impressed. Now what do you got? All right, hot stuff versus Damien. Now. <laughs> no, I tease. I tease. Who's Wait, next? Um, oh, oh, should we do like a last roundup? Yeah. Let's do a last round. Yeah. This has been great. It you know, great. we could go on round. and on for hours, yes. but let's 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 do, do a lightning round, go. okay? All right, I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do something with two. I'm just gonna go at it, okay? Two characters that I really dislike, okay? <laughs> right. Herman Munster from the Munsters from the '64 TV you series. Like the no, do you like Herman no, Munster versus like versus. No. The Frankenstein character on Groovy Ghoulies. You know, the guy who always goes, <laughs> I needed that. Here you have two really pathetic Frankenstein-esque type creatures. But if you put them... Oh, that's great, Sean. That's great. So you'll have no problem in trying to decipher which one would win well, in a who, battle. Who do, you, who, would, who do you think would win? I, bl- I think Herman Munster would. Why? Would. Because the other one... he's not animated? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably pretty much it. Yeah. You have a distinct advantage. <laughs> I think there's... I think Just wipe Herman, the cell clean. Yes, I, I think... <laughs> I think Herman would find it within himself to destroy the the cartoon one because he'd be so freaking annoying. I yeah. think Herman's so kind hearted though. He's like no, yeah, big, but, but the other know. one's an idiot. It's no, they stupid. start yeah. singing. Remember they had yeah. songs. Yeah, they, do a, they get in a band. Yeah, playing and then, a new band. And then Herman go, go oh, 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 and he dance. <laughs> darn, 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 darn. Yeah, two two monsters enter, one monster leaves. Okay. That's well, a thing. Guess, yeah, probably Herman. Herman. Yeah, Herman. Yeah, Herman. 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 Okay, right, great. Go. Got got okay, there. All right. Okay, I got one for you. David Zellaby, the blonde haired kid. From Village of the Damned. Oh, 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 oh yes. The main kid. Yes. Versus Anthony Fremont, Billy Moomy from It's a Good Life. Oh, nice. Oh, my God, Sean, that's brilliant. Both have te- telekinetic power. That is... Now, sh- now David, Village of the Damned? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I know exactly. David, David yeah. can, can, can read your mind. He can read he, your he mind. He can control people's minds. They both can read... Slam dunk. Come on. But so can but so can Anthony Fremont. He can also create things he out of nothing. He can make things. Yes, but he's just a kid and... David is much more intelligent I think, than Anthony. He is. Anthony is still like a, a very immature kid. You are and underestimating the evil of children. Well, it's but, the immaturity. But David, <laughs> David is, is they're alien. the worst. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. David, uh, David is an alien possessed. You give a child. kid powers, yeah. it's done. Okay, it's he's a half. Or he's a half breed. No, no, he's actually a half breed. But it's half Anthony's alien. lack of maturity that makes him so unpredictable. That's and true. Evil. So he would he just wish David into the cornfield? That'd be it immediately. No, but, but, but if David has upper hand, you're a very bad alien. No, Boom. David. David could. Well, he there, would have okay, the intelligence yeah. enough to not irritate little Billy Mummy, and then all of a sudden, well, control, and then he'd well, say, and, and then he'd say, the and then he'd say, when your you head is on Billy fire, Mummy. and then he right. would not. The little he would not be able to control that because if his head was immediately on fire, yeah, think, right. who's yeah. the little fancy pants blonde guy in shorts? I'm and just saying, no, no. I think it's Sean. Right to the cornfield. I think it's close, but I agree with you because he is an alien intelligence, and I think he does have the intelligence enough, and he's able to read. Read right. the other kid's he, mind. He, he can read what Anthony's thinking he's yes. going to do before he exactly. does Exactly. So I'm actually going to go with Village of the Damned Kid. Yeah. Uh, I think. Anyone else? Me too. Me too. Nope. Mm. No. Wow. All right. No way. Okay. No way. So you think. Without a doubt. It's James? Billy Mummy. Yeah, Billy Mummy. But it could be an interesting contest. Graham? All right. Yeah, who are you going to go with, buddy? I got to go Billy Mummy. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. It's well, close. It's close. It's, yeah. it's close. Yeah. Well, it's close. He, he, he would have. He would definitely have a better advantage than the drunk guy at the party. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he turns into Jack in the Box. Right. right. Someone just came up behind come him. Come up behind him and hit him. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. yeah. But eventually, yeah, he cornfield. Okay. All right. All right. Who's <laughs> okay. cornfield? Matt, you want to throw one at us? <laughs> well, I feel like I have to do this one as a matter of tradition. Okay. Okay. I hope it's not what I think it is. Oh, yeah. Night of the Leap. I know. Yes. Oh, God. 
Are you ho- serious? Hopefully we haven't done this before. Remind me if we have, because I'll move on to something else. But I think we have not. <laughs> we did... Night of the Lepus. Yes. Rabbit. Yes. Against the rabbit from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Ooh. Oh. 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 Holy, Grail. Yeah. Holy Grail. Holy Grail. Holy Grail. Holy Grail, right? Holy Grail. Yeah. E- even though it's so, they go much, right for the it's so much, much smaller, smaller, it would just, it would yeah. just like, like just but hop around. Here's that. my <laughs> thing. One thing we know, even though it's not... Done well. It's not shown to us in a very good fashion in the film that of the Lepus, but we know that they are savage. They are rabbits. vicious. They're savage. savage. Horrible. Because well, we get close ups of their yeah. face. They, you they know, like, they like smeared ma- with ma- jam or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> ma- <laughs> ma- yeah. 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 So get it? They're killers. Uh, yeah. But the, but the yeah. grail rabbit's so quick and so like. He is quick. Yeah. He's it small. goes right for the He's neck. He's small. Man. goes right for the neck. So what would happen, I think is that it would take out a few of them initially. Right, right. But then the other ones would go, oh, we'll see what's happening. And and <laughs> while it was like piercing the throat of one of them, another one would get him. But you see, yeah. Matt, if, if, if it's one lepus against the, yeah. the, the one, rabbit yeah. from... Oh, we're talking the, one. Yeah, yeah it's, then one, it's one on one. It's, one it's, I, okay, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Matt, I, no, you're right. I, would, I would say it's the it's the rabbit from... Uh, it's no, Grail. It's, it's Money Holy Grail. But that's Money Grython? <laughs> yeah. Bonnie like Rython versus <laughs> Alright James Another great band Give us one All right, All right, Take us home here This comes out of a famous Monsters cover Ooh King Kong From 1933 Yes Versus The shark from Jaws <laughs> oh. That's like ape yeah. Yeah. In, in ape he fights a He fights a rubber uh. shark Well mm-hmm. okay my first thought is okay. So if King Kong wades, King in the, Kong did kill I, a, a dinosaur. I know, I you know. know. Yes, I more than one dinosaur. But let's say he wades into the water, yeah, you know, and the yeah. shark comes up and sees this <laughs> big furry uh, leg or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Even if he grabs a bite of King Kong, uh-huh. I still think King Kong would be able to reach down. Oh yeah, yeah grab it's like a strong. bear grabbing a salmon. Yes, yeah, yeah. nothing. Yeah. yeah, it'd be nothing. Eat it. Exactly. Yeah. Even if it was a large salmon. Oh yeah. God, he would yeah. just he would just bite its head off and. So you think it's no contest? I think so. Yeah. Um, and he rinses his leg uh-huh. off in the street. Uh-huh, James. Well, no, 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 no. Uh-huh. It's a good... No, it's 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 good. Yeah, that was great. I, I think uh, I would give the shark maybe a little more latitude. No. I, I, there's speed. There's ferocity. There's those teeth. There's no intelligence. But well, it's so it's small. There's there's limited, there's limited Tiny intelligence. teeth, though. Now, if it was the jaw shark versus jabber jaw, <laughs> that's something different. I was going to go jaw shark versus like the day of the dolphin. Well, the George C. Scott well, dolphin. Well, the dolphin yeah, would win. You got a bomb on it. You got a bomb on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's a movie. All right. Okay, so I think <laughs> we all kind of agree with King Kong. Right. Grant, Day of the puppy. Grant, okay. Last Why one. don't you give it to us? Give us a good one. All right. Who would win? The Fog from The Fog, the movie from the 70s. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Great. Versus... The house in the Amityville Horror, the '79 version. Oh, <laughs> so that the house itself versus the, the house fog. itself, the possessed, demonized house that you saw at the end of the Amityville yeah, yeah, Horror yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Versus the fog, but the fog contained Bla- it contained, Blake yeah, and the sailors and the, and the from, sailors. The, from the uh, Elizabeth Dane. Mm. Yeah, the ship. But the, the supernatu- ghosts are inside. It is a the supernatural fog. entity, though, mm-hmm. and you could almost say those things are kind of demons. They're ghosts, but they're it's a demonic force. If they were to appear around the house or in the house, Sean, couldn't they like start chopping it up I guess or they could just lighting destroy on the fire house or something? With, yeah, I mean, if it was even if, if the they, house, if said, they Get literally out. were going after the house and not anybody in the house, they just wanted to destroy the house. Yeah, we're talking the physical house, the physical house, which is an yeah, evil yeah, house. because the house was like right, it was like because that's the focal it. point of the supernatural. The demons entity. are in right, the house. right. Yeah. It's yes. like the gate to hell or whatever. Right, right. so. You eliminate the house because that's always been my thing about haunted houses. If you destroy the house, does is it, it done? Des- yeah, does it destroy the? I mean, if you have like a, ooh, it's the haunted lot. You know, like, is that, <laughs> it's the haunted is that mound, a thing? It's the haunted mound of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, in, uh, right. actually, isn't it that the case in Poltergeist? Your favorite movie, Matt? Isn't it? A, is it a haunted? It's, it's on, Indian burial ground. Yeah, right? Indian well, that's yeah. Yeah. it's not yeah. ancient tribal that's burial grounds. It's thing. just people. <laughs> <Ancient> <laughs> you move the headstones without the graves. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. You only move the headstones. Why? Oh, Why? That's right, that's right. <laughs> There's a marionette haunting us. Oh. That's not a line from the movie, Matt. <laughs> well, it should be. So okay. There's, there's a pork chop that crawls. Anyway, okay. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. so, so getting back well, to Amityville House or the fog, mm-hmm. I would say that I think the fog has the power. To infiltrate the house, but the, fog, but the fog itself, like I said, the fog is the is the, is the 
harbinger of what's inside the fog, which is the, the ghosts. Yeah, so yeah. The so ghosts th- are what do the damage. The fog is, you know... My thing is, though, so the, the the fog brings the ghosts into the house, but you could say, oh, now the fog has invaded the house with the ghosts, right. but now you're inside the house, so now it has the power. Inside the house, they ha- everyone in the Amityville had to get out of the house. They had to physically get out of the house. Once you're inside it, I don't care how crazy your fog is, sure, doesn't but, the house have power? So, but they're ghosts, though, so how can you kill a ghost? So, so it's ghosts against ghosts, or ghosts or against demons. demon, or demon, yeah. demon ghosts against demon So right, are you right. saying, Matt, it's like supernatural against supernatural it, it would it be is, it but is. i would say if we're talking about taking the house apart i would think that the minute the ghosts they have those hooks right yeah mm-hmm. so you just hook into some drywall yeah, tear off and just <laughs> yeah. pull that shit down and just yeah the fog ghosts will just wait you out it'll take some time right, to tear right. that house down but don't isn't there don't you think then that sort of dragon you know uh hedgehog wolf thing that kind of the uh, house becomes uh, at the end doesn't that like they because the house the they could put flies around thing. It. yeah the pig face yeah. thing doesn't that doesn't could well, that do could, something like couldn't the fog just kind of sit around the house and get it all mildewy and smelly and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it would get yeah. mold that's on that's a very good point and, and he's got a very good point it they, and, it, yeah just the mildew alone yeah, just but, rotting the wood black from the fog but then the crazy flies come out and couldn't. But, but, but they, no, they, 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 they don't hurt the ghosts. They don't hurt the ghosts, though. <laughs> yeah. those, those ghosts don't the, care. The ghosts, the ghosts are all, ghosts. The ghosts, I love flies. The, the, the ghosts have rotting uh, leprosy maggot yeah. faces. Yeah, they're, they're totally, hey, so, you want to eat yeah. something? I'm like, right here. Long story short, over a period of time, the house would decay and turn into a pile of mush, at which case you'd say, so now you have, instead of a haunted house, you've got a haunted lot. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. So maybe the entity would still be there, but would the entity want to hang around at this point? It's like I wow. wouldn't want to. No, it's just although, a lot. although I don't think we know the full potential of that entity. We don't know what other manifestations it could take, to, and if we to, to, to protect itself, and if we go by the Lutzes, you know, they said because you know people moved into the house afterwards and nothing, right? Right. right of course. And so then they go, oh well, they started chasing us. So like as soon as they left, the thing's gone anyway. So I'm saying that the fog would be a slam dunk because now it would just be an empty house and they just tear the shit out of the place. <laughs> well, I'm saying on the contention that the, Lutz that the entity is still there. Stays in the house. Oh, they are the Lutz is right. still there. The Lutz is still have to be there then. <laughs> okay, so I, w- right. I want to know what you think. <laughs> what do I think? Yes. Mr. Analytical here. <laughs> <laughs> I think ultimately, I agree with you guys. I think ultimately the fog would win because ah. it has the power yeah. to come and go. Mm-hmm. Right, and I go, think right. I, my my the thing that I would wonder, and I've wondered with this with many of these tonight, would the fog then just inhabit the house, and then it would just be, it would they would join forces and become a Ooh. super evil Ooh. fog house no. that floats around with no. these guys? No, <laughs> Maybe. no. I think it'd be no. very West Side Story. It'd be it like, would. <laughs> no, I'm I'm with Matt. You know, I, turf war. Yeah, you know? it, you're right. I think then I then I would go fog. Then I would actually right. when it, at, when it's all said and done, the house I think could. All of the things the house can do, right, right. A, like you guys said, a ghost isn't going to give a shit. Right. Yeah. It's and only, can, it's, it's only powers that are hurting humans. And they're a mixture of supernatural and physical. Kind right. of, because yeah, the ghosts be, are like They can appear physical. and reappear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, this has been this has been That's terrific. Wow. I think we've great. cleared up we've, a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yes. Well, well, we've. We, it's interesting because we brought up a lot. Of, like we, we did some cartoons, science fiction, fantasy, horror, it's and a good and uh, yeah, like, this I, a good I've one. learned more about supernatural. Thank you, we've Matt. We've learned and, a lot and, about uh, each other. Yes, yeah. yes, uh, we have. This, but this about life been, about property. But this has been good. <laughs> uh, I, I had uh, fun. It was I had a blast. Fun. Yeah. Thank you, Graham, for being here. I think awesome. I love you even more than I've ever loved you. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a great show of high praise. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> now, I know that you're a really busy guy. Yes, sir. And you've got a lot of things going on. Is there, is there anything we that you We want you to plug everything well, I in the world. Because no, no, I want to know about your yes. thing that well, you Well, the, yeah. the, the movie I directed and I uh, produced it with Chris Mancini. It's a comedy. We uh, love him. Com- he's a fantastic comedy film nerds. We produced this. I directed it. Uh, it's called Earbuds, the podcasting documentary. All wait, about. Wait, wait. Earbuds. Earbuds. The podcasting documentary, okay, all about podcasting, and it's about the connection. Cool. And anyone listening, obviously, is going to get this between the podcaster and the fans. I mean, we were even talking before the show about people have emailed you guys saying this show has helped me get through a tough time right? or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we explored a lot of that in the film. We interviewed a lot of big time podcasters: Chris Hardwick, Joe Rogan, Aisha Tyler, Ooh. Mark Maron, all that stuff. 
and we also got a lot of fans. We did yeah, a lot of real f- personal stories, real too. personal for- stories, That's like cool. people saying, you know, I suffer from depression or mental illness, and listening to these shows helped me. We talked about the. We have a fan who was in Japan, and d- during the big tsunami. Other comedy film nerd fans reached out to her on Twitter. Wow. And she couldn't talk to anyone. She was like, for whatever reason, only Twitter was working. <laughs> you know, Tokyo's like shaking. It's crazy. And all these fans. And she sent us this letter about a month or so after and was like, the f- comedy film nerd fans, the community of podcasting was there for me in this way that was so unbelievable. And really, it's kind of hard to imagine, like these people that listen, and we're all fans of the same thing. We've never met each other, you know. And it's like we interviewed like a guy that's a drill instructor for the army, and and he's like, oh yeah, when Sanai was going through that thing in Japan, and you're wow. like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's that's it's cool. a it's a really cool thing. So that movie we raised 140 grand on Kickstarter, which again shows the power of the podcast. Totally, fan, yeah, oh, yeah, you know. And so the whole community, and and we also co-produced the Los Angeles Podcast Festival. So you see a lot of cool stuff there, and it's something. I'm, it's 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 shows how great this medium is, and how literally we can sit here for two hours and argue over you know Steve McGarrett versus right, right, <laughs> Captain yeah. Yeah. and people like listen and love rep- it. And respond and like talk. Yeah. I know that it, yeah it's, it's cool. so great. So it's available at comedyfilmers as a as a standard def download starting at seven ninety nine high def. Uh, oh wow, great! You can pre order DVDs. DVDs are going to be on sale. In the next week or two so you can cool. get DVDs as well and it's a it's a really cool thing you're supporting independent film independent artists it's yes. a great thing go to comedyfilmnerds.com and that's also where you can listen to the podcast we're on iTunes Comedy <laughs> Film Nerds is our podcast Matt's been on it many times yes, Yeah, we awesome. wrote a book that Matt Wait, wrote some chapters in Ma- Matt, right, right. Matt's been on your show yeah oh <laughs> yes I have oh well <laughs> thanks for letting us know Matt that's great <laughs> no, I, I, you, you forget because it's all about you no 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 no, no, no. it's not about me <laughs> <laughs> and uh uh, and I know that you also have prior things that you've done too that you're always promoting, like yeah. Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Afghanistan's an, another documentary I directed about doing a comedy tour in Afghanistan Whoa. and going over there and, and like f- completely freaking out. And you, you see what being in a war zone is like through the eyes of a comedian. Yeah, the wow. stories that you've told me are like just unbelievable. And t- so you have to see this documentary because uh, you can't fathom like it's a, another world. It is from it is. your life. What, wait, what's it called again? Afghanistan. Afghanistan. L A F F. It's also available as a pay what you think is fair download at comedyfilmnerds.com. Great. So if you go to comedy. Filmnerds.com, cool. you can get Afghanistan and Earbuds as a download, and you can see these two Beautiful. features that I've directed. It's nice. really awesome. cool. Yeah. No, I love it. And anything else? Uh, just, uh, you're touring too, right? Yeah, you're I'm on the road a lot. Comic. So if you go to GrahamElwood.com or at Graham Elwood is my Twitter handle, uh, I'm doing some stand up and other stuff and, you know, po- we podcasting and all that stuff. So one of my favorites. Thanks, Seriously. dude. No, this oh is absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Grant, Thanks yeah. very much. You brought yeah. us a really insane. You guys, this was great. Yeah. No, this I've known awesome. Matt for years, and yes. thank you for bringing me on the show. To please meet you come again. Absolutely. Please come again. Whatever was, you guys want me that, to do, this I'm in. That was so great. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go for another, <laughs> another round of that. Cool. Completely awesome. <laughs> Time for a listener shout out. Shout out! Right. This goes out to Mark Chiofalo from Defiance, Ohio. Mark cool. Chiofalo. Mark Chi- Chi- Did Chi- I get that right? <laughs> Mark Chiofalo. Chiofalo. No, I want to get it right. Chiofalo. Chiofalo. Hey, Mark. Mark wrote Forget a about it. very nice message. He said, I found the show completely by accident about six months ago on Podcast Addict, and I've been wow. addicted ever since. Ooh, I've started like from the that. beginning and just finished the Stan vs. Evil podcast. <gasps> yeah. That's a wow. That's that's a good one, yeah. Wow. You're, That's he's, some he's uh, listening power like, listening. Yeah. Your cool. post-podcast gag blooper outtakes are pure gold. <laughs> I, I laugh so hard you guys bring tears to my eyes. Uh, I don't know if they're the, all the cool. The topics are great, but the way the four of you interact with each other is the heart and soul of the show. Oh, oh That's true. I, I really is, believe that as true. well. Mark says, I grew up and still live here in Northwest Ohio where I watched a show every Friday and Saturday night called Nightmare Theater. <gasps> With oh. a host known as the Shroud. Ooh, oh my god, cool. I, know, I didn't that, know that right? one. I love, I love yeah. all the different horror That's hosts. So cool. This was my gateway to horror movies, with Creature from the Black Lagoon being my favorite. Yeah, wow. Kindred oh, Spirit. Yes, sir. Says, I really like the hats, guys, but I'm holding out for the T-shirt. 
going to wear the hell out of one of those. Oh. Now, Mark, Mark, we have not started selling the T-shirts yet. Um, I think it's something that we hope to get around to. Well, we will days. eventually I mean, get to there are, yes. Look, because okay. we have that. They are, they are high quality T-shirts. You know, they're not. <laughs> like no, the why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? hundred percent paper. No, 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 no. It's no, no. Mark, they are, yeah, well, these we'll are get not that, cheap, we'll thin out shirts. These are thick, rich shirts with really great logo oh, and silk. So hold out for the chaps. <laughs> really. No, no. Keep, no, yeah, keep, I hear, keep singing I, the virtues of the t-shirts that no one can get, Larry. <laughs> but it's going to happen. Yeah, we'll, yeah, it will. You know, we'll make that happen. Mark says, even though we're separated by half the country, my hope is to meet you all one day and throw a few back and talk monsters. Of course. Oh, yeah. I would love Please. that. And on that note, I'll keep America strong and always listen to Monster Party. Oh. Yeah! Oh, more. Mark, thank awesome. you very, very much. More we appreciate More listeners like your, Mark. Yes, Absolutely. indeed. Oh, that's and uh, let's also remind our listeners that you can find us on Facebook at Monster Party TV, also YouTube at Monster Party TV. On Twitter, we are at Monster Party HQ, and our Instagram handle, also Monster Party HQ. Uh, we are now on Google Play Music for those of you with Androids. Yeah. Let's remind our listeners also that you can buy the uh, aforementioned Monster Party cap with 17 billion stitches. No, Very high quality, not 17 billion. Breathable material. Uh, it's made, made from the hairs of this little troll dog. No, <laughs> no, and but Furbies. it's high quality. Where does underwear? You can find that's it what on, I do on eBay at our store, Monster Party Store. Easy to remember. And hey, if you're listening to us on iTunes, please take a moment and write a review. We would love to hear from you. On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I am Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong. Keep debating. Who would win? For example, Matt Weinhold against James Gonas against Larry Stroth against Sean Sheridan. No. I think it would be me. I would win. No, I, I would think win. I would win. I would win. I would win. I would win. No, I would win. I would win. No, 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 you are wrong. You are so wrong, sir. I would win. I would win. That's such a fool. I'd win. Me. <laughs> test, test. Okay. I'm good. All right. Then let's start. You sound amazing. Thank yes. You. Are you are you are you excited? Are you on fire? I'm wow. <laughs> right? Come on. <laughs> Phones on stun. Graham fucking Elwood. <laughs> Asshole. Stun. You said stun. <laughs> Phones on stun. Wow, I'm impressed. Hey, force the be guy with who you, doesn't baby. like Star Trek. No, no, now you just lost me. May the force be long and prosper. There you go. Oh, Sean. Why Save it for the show. Why encourage? <laughs> why encu- Don't even get us started. You, you know Star Trek, right? Yeah, I've heard he, of he, it. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to start this, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. No yeah. turning back now. All right, a little moment of silence, and then I'll do my spiel. Silence. Imagine, okay, who would win? Two creatures enter, one creature leaves. Imagine Smog from... The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog, from 2013, directed by Peter Jackson. That great, great, dragon. amazing dragon. Right, the right. Intelligent right. dragon. A right. voice was uh, uh, Benedict, uh, Benedict uh, Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. Right, right. Great, great dragon. Versus, <laughs> it's not, uh, it's the second Okay, one. get to it. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Dragonheart, uh, the, with the voice of Sean Connery. Um I'm glad you researched this before the show. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I went to Seven Samurai. I don't know where you're coming Smaug around. Smaug and that guy <laughs> from the thing in the... Remember the deal with the... And the guy comes out and he's like... Are you talking about Draco? Yes, that's it. <laughs> you, you, you want to redo that? Yeah. We'll say you start with Draco. Draco! <laughs> I think we should keep it the way it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> no, no bloopers on this one, though. <laughs> I'm probably going to use that shitty moment of mine for a blooper. He's what shitty moment? funny. Uh, <laughs> what shitty moment? All right. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please. No! He had fun. Yeah. Yes, we're now a morning zoo.